to you tonight from Houston. The Astrodome used to be the eighth wonder of the world, but now our wonderful stadium towers it. Reliance Stadium, where the Super Bowl was held last year, they're hoping for a super upset in Cougar colors tonight. There is no calm in the eye of Brock Berlin Storm. The Miami quarterback suffered through a rocky 2003. More INTs than TDs. And the tail was no different for three quarters against Florida State. But a comeback overtime win by could be the springboard to stability. Around him, we know Miami doesn't rebuild. It reloads. And while the conference is new, the Canes are still championship material. Tonight, they come to Houston, where Ware and Klingler were the big names of the airways before. And now Kevin Cobbs trying to put the Cougars back on the map. No bigger name to shoot for than Miami. They played one of the most memorable ESPN games on a Thursday night back in 1991. We'll see Miami and Houston one more time on college football primetime presented by Cooper Tires. The Canes number four in the nation. Houston looking to even the record. Tonight's game has all of our primetime Thursday games available on ESPN HD presented by Phillips and Best Buy. <sighs> Hi. Mike Tirico, Lee Corso, Kirker. What if the Houston folks were nice? They wanted to welcome college football primetime, so here you go. Pour it down, Mike. Pour yeah. it down. Yeah, pour it down. Howdy, partner. Down. Howdy, partner. Please talk so people don't okay. look at me. Okay. Uh, or you for that. Mel Brooks. I, Mel Brooks. Blazing Saddles. <laughs> there's the look. He said I looked like Mel Brooks in Blazing Saddles. You that do. made me feel bad. He just called me. Oh. Tell me about Miami. 2-0 beat Florida State. Blew out Louisiana Tech last week. Well, let's start about Brock Berlin, the quarterback. First of all, Brock Berlin is 58-2 as a high school and college quarterback. He's a winner. But I think Miami might have one problem. I'm not so sure after watching him twice in takes that they have the NFL-type Miami receivers on the outside that catch that ball and go all the way. And that could hurt him, Kirk, in a tough ball game the rest of the year. Now, quit laughing. This is serious business. I'm trying. They, that could hurt them later yeah. on against good defensive teams. Well, I, I think the Miami offense eventually is going to be okay. I think Ryan Moore's got off to a slow start, but I think there's enough skill there where I think people are going to find this offense has the firepower. Now, defensively, I think it's really the story for Miami. The reason they have a shot to make a run at the Orange Bowl. Their defense, you realize, last year had four first-round picks. In the last three years, they've had nine first-round picks and yet this year's defense I think has a chance <laughs> has a chance to we're just killing them with the hats go ahead, go has ahead. a chance to be as good if yeah. not better yeah. than the last three they have and it's because they're playing with more hunger they haven't allowed a touchdown and you both look very good incredible. thank you somebody looks good in one of these hats Jill Arrington standing by with Houston's head coach Jill well thanks Mike win in Texas this is what we do coach Bryles what does your team need to do today on the field to compete with Miami you know, what we can't do is give them anything to get fired up about. I mean, we have to maintain our composure on both sides of the ball. Special teams, they they really relish those opportunities when they come to them. So if we'll just relax, let things come to us, you know, prolong the football game, get our fans excited, get ourselves excited, start to blue, then we got a chance to win the game. Coach, Houston's already gone up against a top-ranked team in o Oklahoma earlier in the season. What do you expect to learn about your team in today's game against fourth-ranked Miami? I tell you, when we went up to OU, I was really proud of our guys because we went up there to win the football game. We never backed down. We fought hard the entire game. Tonight will be no different. We're going to come out playing. We're going to come out smoking. We're going to come out expecting to win. All right, Coach. Thanks. Good luck. Back to you, Mike. And they're not on campus in Reliance Stadium where the roof is closed. So we'll take our hats off for the rest of the night. See you for kickoff in a few minutes. Check out number four with your own eyes. To the studio, Chris Fowler. Good evening. The Houston Cougars take the field just a few miles from their campus here at Reliance Stadium. They played here once already this season, lost to Rice a chance to take on one of the top programs in the nation, the number four. Miami Hurricanes come to Houston as we welcome you to college football primetime presented by Cooper Tires. Houston and Miami, Mike Tirico, Lee Corso, Kirk Herbstreet, Jill Arrington's on the field. She'll join us here momentarily. We talked a little bit about what is important for Miami and all the focus because of the legacy, the tradition, and the talent 
always comes back to the quarterback, Brock Berlin. Well, Brock Berlin got off to such a, a slow start last year. You, people think he's an experienced quarterback because of his days in Gainesville under Steve Spurrier. But you got to remember in the Miami offense, he was an inexperienced quarterback, and I think he struggled at times for consistency. He's worked very hard in the offseason to become a more accurate thrower, trying to make better decisions. In tonight's game, Houston's going to load up the box to try to take away Frank Gore and Tyrone Moss. And I think that's going to give uh, Brock Berlin a chance to make some big plays down the field. Well, Houston is a huge underdog. There's no question about it. There's no kidding about that. But if they could protect their quarterback, Kevin Cobb, and run a couple of plays, just every once in a while throw it in there to keep those guys off of him, their offensive scheme, the wide open spread offense, high risk, could give Miami some problems. And keep your eye on a little guy, five foot nothing, five seventeen, Vincent Marshall. He's my favorite. This guy can fly from Houston. He might cause him problems, too. Yeah, he's a big receiver. He caught 17 in the first few games. Somebody who's going to be watching him is a pretty special player to watch on defense. For more on him, again, Jill Arrington. That's right. Quarterback Andrea Roll is the leader of Miami's defense. Despite having the opportunity to go to the NFL and be a probable first-round draft pick, he came back this season to play for Miami because he says he wants to earn a championship. Now, yes, he has a ring from the 2001 championship team, but he said he didn't play a significant role in that game. He wants to play a significant role on this team in getting them a championship. Now, his energy, the players feed off of his energy on the field. He'll certainly play hungry today, as you'll see. But boys, Jill, we certainly did see that out of him in the game against Florida State. Well, the history between these teams, we mentioned at the top 1991. That was the last time these two teams met, 40 to 10. Number 10, Houston, was thrashed by number two, Miami, in the Orange Bowl. And you go back over the history between these two teams, Miami leading the all-time series, 9-7. Canes won the toss to further the option to the second half, so they will kick it off with their punter, Brian Monroe. Donnie Avery and Ryan Gilbert back deep to receive. That's Avery. A redshirt freshman here out of Houston, number two. Both teams on the short week, and off we go on college football primetime. Bouncing kick scooped up by Gilbert. With not much room, he's taken down at the 15-yard line. So that's where the aforementioned Kevin Cobb will get things going. This is a sophomore from Stephenville, Texas, which is the high school where the head coach, Art Bryles, used to coach. So Cobb has been in this offense since eighth grade played as a true freshman last year was the top true freshman in conference usa this is sophomore season it's a wide open offense but it's not a run and shoot it's a very reactive offense what the defense gives they hope to take one big piece of news for houston fans kendall bryles son of coach art bryles and a very talented offensive player is not in the lineup for Houston tonight. He is injured and right out of the gate, Houston has the wrong personnel coming on the field. First down run. Works out better than it could have. <laughs> Ryan Gilbert, after that mess, ended up getting about five yards. Here are the Bud Light starting lineups. Anthony Evans comes off 282 rushing yards against Army. Donnie Avery, Vincent Marshall's the man Lee mentioned, and Coochie's a good tight end. First team all conference last year. Up front, there are a couple of concerns. Hawkins and Swan are good on the left side. Sterling Doty is the quarterback's roommate. Alfred, freshman. Sir Vincent Rogers, true freshman, making his first start tonight against Miami. On second down, the quick pass for Vincent Marshall is incomplete. We'll have third down coming up against the Miami defense, yet to allow an offensive touchdown here in 2004. Baraka Atkins, Orion Harris, Antonio Thomas, and Javon Nanton so strong up front. Linebackers Leon Williams did not make the trip back home with an injury, so John Beeson starts in the middle with McIntosh and Gooden on either side. Antrell Roll is the man Jill talked about before. He's number six with Kelly Jennings on the corner. Greg Three, Brandon Merriweather, the safety. Names not as familiar as the past. Talent just the same. And I think we had a Houston man heading upfield early. I think you'll find Sir Vincent Rogers, the freshman you just mentioned, a little bit antsy. Crawford snap, full start, offense. It's a five-yard penalty, still third down. The third and about ten coming up. Jill touched on an interesting point about Antrell Roll that we're going to watch not only in this game, but I think throughout the season if Miami is to try to 
stay in the mix and make another run at a BCS bowl game. He reminds me so much of Ed Reed for this Miami team. Not so much as far as what they ask him to do, but as, as far as the inspiration, that leadership that he provides for this Miami defense. He is the guy. He's the pulse of Miami's team. What you saw Houston just do there is what they do a lot. They move 100 guys a 1,000 ways. Pop throws down the middle for his tight end. Merriweather came over the top for the big hit. Roger McIntosh there as well. Passing complete. Punch coming up. When teams go up against Miami, they know they're going to get a two-safety look. But what's tough is the closing speed. And a normal safety, he is not able to come over and make the play. First of all, it was a good play by McIntosh yeah. getting back. But did you see they try to go right over top of McIntosh, and Merriweather's closing speed was able to come over and help out. But that's exactly what Houston did. They want to try to get an isolation on Roger McIntosh. They got it, but the safety was there. Yep, so McIntosh made a heck of a play with his backhand there. Spread everybody out on this punt with Justin Laird. Look out. Look out. It's blocked. Touchdown. Well, it was an odd formation, and I don't think you'll see very much of it in the future. Tavares Gooden able to scoop it up, and Miami's on top, 6-0. I know, Lee, usually it's oh. you that likes to give the recommendations, but if you allow me Please do. 55 seconds into this Thursday night tilt, I, I'd like to say that I don't recommend giving Miami an advantage when it comes to their speed. They looked right. at three men inside there and thought... <laughs> Who's, who's going to win? Who's going to yeah. get there? It's a good race. Who's going to get there first? Anthony Reddick with the block punt. John Petty's 43rd consecutive extra point. Well, spread them all out. Miami outnumbered them, and they outquicked them. The block and the touchdown. Turned it to good. 7-0, Canes. The touchdown scored by Tavares Gooden, who recovers the block punt. Anthony Reddick, the man who blocked it, set to cover kickoff here as Miami's on top. Seven to nothing. Miami as good as anyone in the nation scoring defensive or special teams touchdowns over the last few years. Returnable this time for Donnie Avery. He spilled at the 19-yard line. It was Reddick who tripped him, the man who blocked the last punt. Let's take a look at Matt Shimmer, number 32, right here. His responsibility is to block the first man to the outside. And watch as he blocks him, Kirk. It works real well in practice, but they don't have number 26, Riddick, to go against. <laughs> <laughs> That's what happened. The guy's too fast. Oh, yeah, and the scary thing is, and Gooden picks it up, who's going to be their next, I think, great linebacker here at Miami. But I, Riddick is a true freshman. <clears throat> People wonder how they lose all these great first-round picks on defense. It's because they recruit guys like Anthony Reddick. So Kevin Cobb of the Houston offense takes over from its own 19. Try a first down run. And only gain about a yard or two with Ryan Gilbert, junior who transferred from LSU and had 54 yards against Oklahoma. This is a Houston team that played the Sooners about 10 days ago and lost to number two, 63 to 16 in Norman. They come off a win over Army, 35-21 on Saturday over on campus. You see a lot of the formations they will show. Lead the world in window dressing. Uh, and sometimes you have problems. Recovered there as Thomas Carroll, the junior out of New Jersey, came in to cover up Kevin Cobb, who is the quarterback for Art Bryles. Kirk, how would you describe this offense? I think it's difficult to describe because it's not only unorthodox, but Art Bryles has had some success everywhere he has been. And each year, it seems to evolve. Each year, he adds to it. We tried to ask him to describe it, and he really can't just sum it up because it continues to change. Week to week, it continues to change. A lot of window dressing, a lot of formations. They want to spread this Miami defense all over the field horizontally. Loss of four, incomplete intended for Ryan Gilbert. And uh, another three and out. See if they can get the kickoff successfully this time. One of the things I like about our Browse is the fact when we asked him what happened in the Rice game, he said, I tell you what, man, I just didn't have my football team ready. I did not do a good job in the first game. And I'd love to hear a coach finally say something like, it was my fault, not the left guard or the quarterback. Right. 
Justin Laird will try to kick it out of a more conventional punt setup. They got this one away. And a great kick. Roscoe Paris feels it on the hop. And nice play. Wrapped up at midfield by Marcus Ross, a safety redshirt freshman. From right here in Houston, the kick was 39, the return for Lee. Well, first, simplistic, right? You want to get that way? Athletes, they got them on the bench. The, even the trainers, even the managers are athletes. Look good everybody fair, everybody, they? everybody <laughs> looks good. On Larry Coker looks good. Um, Larry Coker even looks good. Now, Houston, they got a spread offense. It could be an equalizer. Now, it hasn't looked that good so far, early, but if they can get a little protection and keep throwing the football, that might be the equalizer right there. The yeah. Under Armour advantage for tonight. Miami takes over in Houston territory at its own 49. Play action block Berlin looking for Sonaris Moss. And the little brother of Santana Moss couldn't pull it in. Second down coming up. Last year, the senior out of Shreveport, Louisiana, had more interceptions than touchdowns. He's really had to deal with a lot of off-season criticism. Came through the end of the Florida State game and had a solid but brief performance in the win over Louisiana Tech on Saturday. I think the win against Florida State because of the way they kept fighting and the way they came back helped a lot with his confidence. But again, when so many people are critical of your performances week after week, I think there's a tendency to just push it a little bit harder trying to make those perfect throws. Second and ten, Frank Gore bounced into Joel Rodriguez, his center. That was brought down by Lance Everson, the middle linebacker. The left third down coming up. As mentioned, Frank Gore. I hope you saw the story on SportsCenter. What a inspirational young man he is. The junior coming off two different torn ACLs. Kobe of the fullback. Moss starts for Roscoe Parrish. Still benched. We'll talk. As a starter, he'll play a bunch. Ryan Moore and Kevin Everett. Everett, a very good tight end. Up front, Winston from Midland, Texas. Tony Tello from right here in Houston. Big night for those guys. Along with Rodriguez, McMeans, and Myers. That deserves a wow at right tackle. Third and nine. They need to get to the 39 to keep this one going. And we had a little bit of movement. Marker down as Berlin is brought down. Looks like Houston was offside of the play as Bryant Brown and Lance Everson made the tackle. They were offside, so walk them off five. Let's watch the right defensive end. I think Brock knew that he had a free play when Brown made the quick jump. Couldn't take advantage of the free play just because of the pass rush, but that's that's the experience of Berlin with the snap count and early in a game you have a Houston defense pinning their ears back trying to get any kind of pressure they can on Berlin. The guy who was trying at the early start on 74, Eric Winston, the left tackle, super stud. Miami thinks he could be one of the best offensive linemen in Kane's history. So now it's third and four from the 43. Look out, Berlin wasn't looking. Snap hit him in the chest. A top shot, incomplete, intended for Ryan Moore. So the Houston defense does a nice job. Let's introduce you to these guys. All fired up there in the secondary is Stanford Route. He's one of the best of the bunch. Travis Griffith, Marque Love, Cade Laney, Joe Clay. He's the guy. Watch 90 tonight if you're going to focus on a defensive lineman. Cole, Everson, and Brown. Everson and Brown made some plays there. Route one corner, Willie Gaston the other. He's from Houston. Will Gully a safety along with Rocky Schwartz. They passed their first test so far tonight. Monroe to kick it away and try to pin the Cougars inside their own 20. And he will do just that. Very well done. Sixth time in this early season that the sophomore, very good athlete out of Palm Beach Gardens, has pinned the opponents inside the 20. Well, the last time. September 1991, number two Miami against number 10 Houston, and the Canes put on quite a show. This is when the Houston Cougars were moving at an all-time record offensive pace, but Miami not only handled it offensively with Toretta and company, they sacked David Klingler five times, knocked him down about 20 more, and Miami walked away with a 30-point win. And from that point on, the Cougar program was never really the same. First down pass by Cobb to Vincent Marshall. He gains about nine yards. And we'll have second and one coming up. We saw some of the people involved there. Gino Toretta helped the 37-3 lead. And if you don't remember back, Miami had the fatigues image from the 87 Fiesta Bowl, really a renegade-type program. Well, so was Houston. 
And John Jenkins with the run and shoot, they were running up scores like nobody's business at that point. They were riding high until they got knocked down on the arms ball. Incomplete. It was a forward pass intended for the fullback, Matt Shermer, who will third and one coming up. Houston's going to these quick throws. I think they call them pop passes yes, to get yeah. the ball to the outside. They're just trying to. I think they're just trying to get Miami's defense to run outside, run outside, run outside, and then they want to try to be able to come to the back to the inside to run the ball. They were very lucky that that was not another touchdown return. Third down, tried to run for it, bouncing for the first down is Jackie Battle, the sophomore of Humble, Texas, taken down by Orion Harris. Well, one of the reasons, other than the fact these teams are playing, that that last meeting was significant, look what's happened since then. Houston was 32-6-1 prior to that. Since then, they've only won 46 games in the last almost 13 seasons after that. And it was a team that was ranked 14th in the country when Jack Pardee was here, the run-and-shoot offense. Jenkins finished 10-1 in 1990. Well, after that game, and they had won the prior week 73-3 against Louisiana Tech, they hit rock bottom, 4-7 and back-to-back -back years, probation for the uh, NCAA violations, and the Cougar program has been mostly off the radar since then. As you get the carry from Anthony Evans for a couple. And off the radar until about now. I should say it was uh, Ryan Gilbert, not Evans, with the carry. Last year, Houston made a bowl game, the Sheraton Hawaii Bowl, and that was very important because it was the first of many steps needed to get Houston football back on the national map. And the thing they're excited about here, the buzz around there, Art Bryles is the first ever former Houston football player to be named the head coach. And Bill Yeoman, his former mentor, is helping him as much as he can. This guy can get the job done here. Three players outside the numbers on second down. Trying to run inside. Orion Harris, junior out of Delaware, with a nice play. Third down coming up. I don't think I've ever seen an offense, and we're gonna, we knew about it, but just to watch it in person, all the skill players, including the quarterback, are right now. Here comes the quarterback, Cobb, and here come his skill players. And he's got a, he's got a lot. How many miles do you think he runs oh. in four quarters? I mean, he's back and forth every single snap, and it wears him down a little bit. Well, it's 25 yards at least right. from one hash over to the sideline. Just Every going snap. sideways. So figure about average 35 yards and 60, 70 snaps. Not to mention on the field. Yeah. Oh, the work on too? the field. Yeah. Forgot about that. Third and eight. Nice twist up front. Miami tried to get there. Cobb got away, but couldn't complete the pass to Ryan Gilbert. And we'll have fourth down. You can do all this work without numbering people. One problem. Miami doesn't matter to them. They just get there. The thing with the Miami Hurricanes and what they're going to do to every team they play this year because of this defensive front, they don't always have to blitz. It's the twists. And look at the speed. Look at the speed. Nine sacks already in two games, 28 tackles for a loss. They love to come after a quarterback, especially on third down long. Devin Hester took two back against Louisiana Tech at the blocked field goal against Florida State. He's been great on special teams the first two weeks. The third punt by Justin Laird is his best. Hester for the 35. Picked up two blocks. Reads a third. Bounces it outside. And takes it down to the 32-yard line. Travis Griffith, senior defensive lineman, made the play. A nice 33-yard return by Hester. I tell you one thing. This kid has got what they call that sixth sense. He not only catches the football well, but watch him with his eyes. See, he's all up. Now he makes that cut. Kirk, if I were them, I know this guy doesn't, Hester doesn't play a lot, but I'd put him in that slot, or I'd give him a wide <laughs> right. out. Get the ball to this guy. He's a sensational player. Well, they, uh, he, he asked the coaches if he could move from receiver to corner, oh. and Timmy Walton, the new defensive back coach, says that Devin Hester, after, you know, he's got to continue yeah. to learn, he could be one of the best that they've had in a long time playing corner because of his natural ability. What a, what a natural player, an instinctive well, he's player. a great player. First and 10 for the 32, tossed to Frank Gore, stopped, no game. Second and 10 ahead, more on Hester, let's go down to Jim. 
Well, and speaking of, of Hester, he says that he wants to emulate his play like Deion Sanders. He wants to contribute in any way he can, but he says his mentor is actually Entrell Roll. They've considered not just teammates, he considers him like a big brother. He gives him advice, he helps him, he criticizes him, he tells him what to do right. He says he's so glad that he came back to give him more advice this season. I think you're seeing the payoff out there on the field. And Jill, because of the injury to Glenn Sharp, starting defensive back who did not make the trip, we might see more of Hester in the secondary here tonight. Second and ten, play action Berlin, throws the deep ball well. Incomplete, looking for Sonaris Moss. So five snaps, guys, and Houston's defense has looked okay so far. Well, one of the reasons why they look so good is because our buddy Rock Berlin is not throwing the ball straight. The first play of the game, he had Moss coming across wide open. That time, he had the man wide open again. I am not impressed on Rock Berlin's ability to throw the ball straight. He's 0-3 right now, but Mike, they're not even close. Right. You know, Mike Kirk, if they're close, to. And Houston's going to leave their corners on an island out there quite a bit tonight. He's got to be able to get the accuracy and hit those deep balls. Lance Leggett, number nine, true freshman in. Here comes pressure. It's picked up, and the pass ah. is caught by Leggett at the 16-yard line. <laughs> Told you couldn't throw it straight. That was a bullet. Was I wrong or what? 16-yard well, game. This is the third that I think bothers Dan Warner Woo. at times is that he knows the capabilities, and he knows what Brock Berlin can do. It's all about rhythm. For, for Brock. When he comes back, hits the one hitch, psh, lets it go, you're not going to find oh. a better quarterback in the country when it comes to arm strength and accuracy. He throws it now before the receiver makes the turn. But it's all about his footwork back at the other end. When he stays in rhythm, he is a great quarterback. First and 10 from the 16. Put it in the belly of Darnell Jenkins. Good job by Wade Cole to string the play out. And Jenkins is pushed out of bounds at the 12 by Willie Gaston. Darnell's a sophomore at a Central High School in Miami. Cole from Midland, Texas. Good football country. Another thing, Kirk, we're going to bring up about the fundamentals. On this time, when Berlin went back that time, you brought up a good point. He went back on his back foot. Now watch him step forward right now and throw the ball. Now when he does that, he can throw. And this guy, number nine, has got to be 17 feet tall. This Leggett is a freshman. Boy, did you see him catch the ball with the hands? That was a nice play by those two guys. Six foot four, a very good looking freshman. Oh. Freshman. How often will we oh, say oh, that? Oh. <laughs> bunch formation to the right, out of the bunch. It is hauled in by Jenkins, who's very close to the first down, right there at the six. Seeing so much of it from the pros to college, the bunch formation. And what that does here now, but you guys understand, it forces the defense to play zone because everybody else is running all over the place and he hits them with a good play. I like that bunch formation, but I like it even better when they throw the outside cuts the other way. Because Kirk, you know they give them that roll up coverage that yep. way, one on one the other way. And against, against this uh, Miami speed, if Houston's gonna continue to play some man, that time oh. you're right, they sat back in zone, but if they play man, oh. you hit that out cut and he's down the sidelines and touchdown. About uh, nine inches to go for the first down for Miami. Third and inches here. Pretty good performance so far by Miami as we're trying to get into the red zone this year. Dual tight end Greg Olson transfer from Notre Dame in as Berlin just keeps it and takes it out to the five. First and goal for the number four team in the line. You look at Brock Berlin last year mm -hmm. to what we've seen in two games this year, and even though his numbers aren't necessarily off the charts, his completion percentage is higher. He's had a number of drops from Roscoe Parrish and Ryan Moore, especially in that Florida State game. He looks more comfortable to me, and it, we'll see as this game goes on. I know he's missed some throws, but just managing the offense and being in control, he looks much more comfortable with this offseason to get ready for this year. More at the bottom of the screen. Two tight ends. Here is Gore. Made one man miss, but the second man, Will Dully, the free safety, could not. In a gain of only a yard, Kyle Cobia, normally a good blocking fullback, missed it there. One thing I understood when we had lunch, besides how good the Mexican was, was they were going to do everything they could to stop Frank Gore. Everything, they're going to put 11 guys up there if they have to. They want to force. 
Brock will end to have to throw to make sure they're going to be moving the ball. We had lunch yesterday with Ron Harris, the defensive coordinator, and our Bryles of Houston. <laughs> Second and goal. <laughs> there is Gore up the middle. Touchdown, Miami. At time, it was the Frederick freshman tight end Greg Olson helping to lead the way as Gore scores his third touchdown of the season. And it'll be a chance for John Penny to add his 44th consecutive injured extra point. Penny said he was favoring his injured hamstring kicking against Louisiana Tech. Smooths that one through. So the good field position after the Hester punt return puts it in position for a quick 31-yard drive capped off by the junior, one of the feel-good stories of college football. Frank Gore makes it 14-0 for number four. Miami running back Frank Gore does so many things well and here a lot of them on display with this touchdown run. I mean he's just it's pretty simple for him to follow these blocks Olsen's leading the way and the thing about uh, Frank Gore even going back to before his injuries he was always a glider I mean he had speed he was able to run away from people but he was so natural coaches always talk about his vision and his instincts as a running back and being his great strengths. And Kyle Copia, number 40, 6'2", 235, linebacker, sealed off the outside to allow him to make that touchdown run. Better kickoff from Monroe this time. Again, from the five, Donnie Aker. Oh, Merriweather hit him at the 21-yard line. Big hit from Branson Merriweather. <laughs> Well, he felt that up here, too. Oh, man. Hey, tomorrow night, 10 Eastern, right here, ESPN, BYU. Cougars have a brutal schedule here. And now it's Boise State, number 21 in the land. Broncos 6-0 uh, and against the Mountain West since moving to a Division I-A school back in 96. College football primetime tomorrow night. Boise State, the nation's longest win streak at 14 games. And of Southern California, and there you see the Canes, which have, uh, who have won a half dozen in a row. Fallon talking about that. Uh, boy, oh, there's an injury for uh, John Beeson, the starting middle linebacker here tonight. And remember, Leon Williams is back in Miami, didn't make the trip. So a little thin there for the Kings. First down run with Ryan Gilbert. Nice bounce by Gilbert across the 30. He'll have a first down. You know, we have not seen much of Anthony Evans, who ran for 282 yards against Army. He has strained a calf muscle here in the early going and is out for the game. So, uh, tough hit there for the Houston offense. What about that Boise State-BYU game tomorrow night? Well, I think BYU, you brought this up against Southern California last week. They play an unbelievable defense. Yeah. I'm not so sure Boise will rip these guys as much as I think they could. It, it, it's really what a matter of BYU. It's a 3-3-5. Yeah. Brocko Mindenhall is the defense coordinator. Again, it's one of those schemes where they throw a bunch of different things. Yeah. And it, it, if you can slow down USC exactly. even for a half, exactly. that tells you that you've got a great defense. And that's exactly what he said last week. I said not a, you know, clobber him. But we said they'd catch him in the fourth quarter because he's on ESPN. Yeah, that's, that's what this, is. Game is gonna be, this game is going to be wonderfully close okay. on ESPN on tomorrow. Friday night. Oh. ESPN. 10 10 Eastern. Eastern. Look forward to watching it. First down, a quick inside run with Gilbert again. Kareem Brown and Brian Pata, reserve defensive lineman coming to make the play. Quarterback still running on and off the field after every uh, every play. You notice so far on this drive, they're still trying to spread them out, but now they're trying to go. The adjustments are being made, and now they're trying to run the football. And of course, now they're in an empty set. See how Miami adjusts to five receivers. This is a second down toss by Cobb. Deep for Vincent Marshall. Ah! Almost reeled it in. He got behind the safety yeah. Greg Freak with five wide. Sometimes you can get the receiver on a safety. And that's and that's my guy. I was telling you before. Yes, when we yes. talked about him with our brows, he said this is one guy I got that could play for Miami. And there he goes down the sideline. Throwing there, lay it out there. Marshy had a chance for national television. You messed it up. Well, the other thing is he should have had that one. Tough. But you're, no, starting, no, you're, you're have. starting to see the offensive scheme work. You, can, you got a one-on-one -on -one matchup yeah. there with your guy, Vincent yeah. Marshall, who's incredibly fast. 
going up against a safety and Greg three you'll take that every time if you're Houston third down Cobb throws behind his intended receiver Pucci the tight end and incomplete so Cobb is one of eight couple of drops a couple behind players Houston's just a hair off in their timing very often the speed of Miami can do that to you another Thursday night recommendation for future opponents of the Miami Hurricanes do everything you can on first and ten because yes. if you get the third and six plus just bring out the punt team. It's very, very difficult against Miami when it's third down to come up with anything as far as conversions on third down. Fourth punch by Laird. Not a good one. So Miami, which has had outstanding field position all night, will continue this drive to start at the 41. Frank Gore might rest this drive. He did his work last time with a touchdown. ESPN's College Football Primetime is presented by Cooper Tires Ultimate Bowl Tour. Go to a Cooper dealer near you or visit ultimatebowltour.com to enter. And in part by Hummer. Check out the H2 at Hummer.com. Hummer, like nothing else. Space Center Houston, the official visitor center to NASA's Johnson Space Center. It's a full-size mock-up of the front of a space shuttle, complete with an authentic cockpit. This, of course, is uh, Space City, USA, the hub of uh, space plans, past, present, and future. So many talented people in this area involved in that industry. Miami scored on a block punt and a drive. This is the first time they'll start in their own territory from the 41. Leading 14 to nothing. Berlin checks it down to Quatrin Hill. And the junior running back from Sunrise, Florida, takes it out to the 48-yard line. Well, Brock Berlin, if you don't remember his tale, started out at uh, Florida, where he started actually one game, the Orange Bowl, then transferred to Miami. 13-2 and as a starter. It's pretty good for a guy who gets a lot of grief and criticism. Only the losses to Tennessee and Virginia Tech last year. Very few players in college football with better marks than that. Saw so Liner and Alex Smith. Pretty good company. Yep. Roscoe Parrish in the game now. And a receiver. He takes the reverse with Berlin, helping lead the blocking charge. Brock out a piece as Parrish is brought down at the 37 yard line. One way to get your teammates to love you. Don't throw a little lame quarterback block. Get out there and hit somebody. That's it, seven. Watch Brock Berlin. This is the way you lead it as a quarterback. You make the turn. You know Osco Parrish is running a 4-2. Watch the head. <laughs> it's his chance finally to lower the headgear, lower the shoulder on a defender as opposed to, and that's why when they watch film, Mike, you touched on it, his teammates see that and they respect that from their leader. 15-yard gain by Parrish. One of the many Miami receivers to be a track star in the Big East last year. Of course, the game's in the ACC now. There is Harris hauling it in again. He's down at the 32-yard line. You know, at this flanker spot, they have Roscoe Parrish, Darnell Jenkins, who caught a couple of balls, and Sonaris Moss, who we saw earlier. All three of those men were in the finals in the 100-meter at the Big East Track and Field Championships last year. Kind of gives you an idea of their speed. Plus, Akeem Jala, who's also there, you see him, number 80, he was in that final as well. So half the final were Miami wide receivers. And that's Sonaris Moss did a great job of running against Florida State with that received reception. He actually won that football game. Ball. The touchdown. Yes. In the final minute of the Orange Bowl to tie the game at 10. Good run by Tyrone Moss. Fumble. The ball came out. Did Houston get it? Let's see. No sign of anything from the officials. I mean, was it down? You know, he stopped the <laughs> clock. Can we Give me something. Uh, okay. Stays here. Third down ahead. <laughs> was there a fumble? I don't know if, they, if they're saying he was down or he recovered the fumble or, you know, we're going to meet for Mexican after the game. Or, you know, he's up here. Did it come out? The players responded. There it is. Yeah, there it is. They must have recovered it. Uh, oh, yeah. Miami or Houston. Oh. Well, that's just... Say nothing about the instant, play, instant replay rule. Bring it back. <laughs> Third and just about a yard and a half here for Miami. Statistically, it's a two-yard need. Tyrone Moss got two and then some. Stafford route the cornerback brought him down. 
back at the 10. First and goal for Miami again. Not real fancy. They're going to pull the backside guard and lead with the fullback. Tell a nice block there. Great blocking by the Miami offensive line, and it opens it up for Tyrone Moss. And I tell you what, one of the best offensive line coaches in the country is sitting over there by the name of Art Keel. He, he just tells these guys they got to get tougher. He's a defensive line coach coaching the offensive line. That's him right there. 26 years at Miami. He's the inspiration behind that Miami football program behind the scenes. Yeah, those 24 years of coaching, a couple of years as a player as well. Moss gets stuck that time. Only a gain of a yard. A penalty marker is down as well after Travis Griffith, the senior out of Huffman, Texas, knocked Moss off his cleats. Miami will be backed up five yards. Larry Coker, one of the great records to start a college football head coaching career. Thirty-seven and three. The losses to Ohio State in the national championship game, Tostitos Fiesta Bowl. They would have won back-to-back -back championships if they would have won that game. And then two losses last year. Tennessee in the Orange Bowl and at Virginia Tech in a primetime ESPN Saturday night game. In his first 40 games, he's won 92.5%, only behind Walter Camp of Yale and old Barry Switzer of Oklahoma. Not bad company for an old high school coach from Oklahoma. Huh? Walter Camp did it in the late 1800s, yep. Switzer in the 1900s, and here in 2000, it's Coker. So it happens once every century. <laughs> Still first and goal after the five-yard walk-off. With the tight end, Kevin Everett, the senior, is brought down at the nine-yard line. One thing that people need to appreciate now from Larry Coker, now in his fourth year, is that when he first started, people talked about, geez, who couldn't coach his team? Look at it, Ed Reed, Ken Dorsey, all the leadership. This is now his team. And for a 37-3 record, with all the individual success and team success, it's very easy for complacency to leak into a program. This is now Larry Coker's team, and this team continues to get stronger and stronger and stronger, and he and his staff deserve all the credit for that. Second down, Moss out. Quadrin Hill is the back. Five in the pattern as Berlin with a quick hit and a nice move by Roscoe Parrish. Who's brought down at the one. The job of tackling by the left corner, Willie Gaston out of North Shore High School, right here in Houston. Last week on game day, Kirk explained what sight adjust means. Sight adjust means if a man comes from the outside like number one did there, you throw the ball before you can get to him, Kirk. That was a perfect example of nobody blocking, but hitting the guy with a YA. Sight adjust, perfect right there. You get into the hands of uh, those players, especially like, Roscoe oh. Parrish in the open space. He's can, yep. He can take it all the way. What are you going to do on game day this week? Are you show us anything? Game day, we're going to break down in the demo field. I think the uh, field goal, all the extra field goal stuff. Missed. That's the nice. Goal sure. Look forward to that. It's going to be good. Miami's going to have third and goal from a yard out. They blocked a punt at a short drive and lead 14-0 as we go to quarter number two in Houston. Quarter number two from the site New England Patriots fans love. Reliant Stadium here in Houston, Texas, where the Patriots won the Super Bowl last year. Mike Coach Kirk and Jill with you, watching Miami, scoring in the first minute on a block punt for touchdown. And then a Frank Gore four-yard run to make it 14-0, trying to make it 21-0 on third and goal. And they do with a touchdown run for Tyrone Moss, but a penalty marker is down. So let's Check the flag before the score is put up. It's against Houston, and the points will count. Offside, 99 on the defense. By rule, the penalty is declined. The results of the play, it's a touchdown. So Tyrone Moss, who had two rushing touchdowns on Saturday against Louisiana Tech, adds his third of the season. And John Penny goes for a consecutive extra point, 45. Yeah. Oh, Miami, eight plays, 59 yards, four and a half minutes. It don't look like they broke a sweat on that one either. 
Well, they've had 96 yards. Berlin, who was 0 for 3 to start, is now 6 for 9 and looking good. 21 0. We'll talk about their defense next. This is the state of uh, hand signals for your school. It's guns up, Texas Tech, right? And yep. Hook'em horns, and Houston's got one there. Thumbs, you know, gig them. Gig them, gig em, Aggies. Gig em, gig em, Aggies. Hook. 21 to nothing. <laughs> you know, Miami still hasn't given up a touchdown this year. That's something to keep, keep tabs on here. Yeah. They have it. Special team of the turnover led to the touchdown by Houston. Special teams taking care of business oh. with Devin Hester. Oh. A huge hit. Two huge hits on the last couple of kickoff returns. Well, tomorrow night, the hunt for October presented by Budweiser continues. The Yankees and the Red Sox continue the battle for the top spot in the AL East. The Yankees in great shape for that. Some of you may see the Twins against the Indians. That's 7 Eastern after Sports Center tomorrow night. The Yankees won. Red Sox in action this evening. So the Yanks lead Boston by four. Three in the loss column. Although Boston is comfortably up on the Angels and the Rangers. The surging Rangers in the wild card chase. Hunt for October tomorrow night. Here's a first down run for Ryan Gilbert. He picks up another first down for the Houston Cougars. Right now, it's tough to get to the ball to be able to bounce to the outside, but they this time were able to do that and pick up big yards on first and ten. Running the football yeah. is their, their most effective way of moving the ball one down thing, the field. I, one thing I want to see, I want to see how Miami plays with a 21 nothing lead. You know, some teams let up. I bet you these guys don't. Nope. From the 33, just a couple of yards there, moving forward with Gilbert. Kirk, you mentioned the Miami defense. You think back, the last touchdown they gave up was back to the second quarter of the 2004 Orange Bowl against Florida State. Florida State's one score came on a turnover. They shut out Louisiana Tech and Randy Shannon, the defensive coordinator, getting the job done here with his troops one more time. Well, Randy is a true Miami guy. He's born and raised in Miami. I'll go into one other point about the Frank Royals award. I don't want to miss this one because this is a good one. Second and seven. Bob keeps. Gains nothing. Well, a third down ahead. Kareem Brown make that play with Javon Nanton. Randy Shannon, the defensive coordinator, won the Frank Royals award, which goes to the top assistant coach in 2001. The first Miami football coach, assistant coach ever to win it. That is a tremendous honor. And one of the great Ralph Friedgen's won it before, but this guy is really a solid football coach. For people to, that aren't aware, we've talked a lot about it tonight. Miami lost four first round draft choices on the defensive side of the ball, nine first round draft choices in the last three years just on the defensive side of the ball. Bob's pass to Vincent Marshall is complete, picks up a first down. And, and the, I think the point that really illustrates this Miami team is. Not only have they not given up a touchdown, they're playing with as much, if not more, hunger and energy this year than they have with all those first-round picks. And I think it's because of the youth. You have seven new starters. There's a lot of guys trying to prove themselves. And Randy Shannon, just like you talked about Art, how important he Kehoe is to his offensive line coach, the, the one constant is Randy Shannon. Quick first-down pass. Picks up about eight yards. This uh, shot to Perry McDaniel. Try to catch Miami napping a little bit. Kirk talked about the first rounders. Sean Taylor went to the Washington Redskins, the number five pick. Then Kelly Winslow to Cleveland right after that. Jonathan Vilma, number 12 to the Jets. DJ Williams to Denver. Vernon Carey staying in Miami, taken by the Dolphins, and Mitch Wolfer taken by the New England Patriots. Penalty marker down as Houston's trying to change the tempo of the game. They may not have been set there as they have moved into Miami territory for the first time tonight. But as you saw there, four of those record six first-rounders taken last year on this defensive unit. Well, prior to the snap, false start, offense number 74. It's a five-yard penalty. And you may say, well, they shut out Louisiana Tech. Remember, Louisiana Tech had scored in 130 games. First time they were shut out in 11 years. That was an impressive defensive show on Saturday. And Larry Coker loves his coaches, but I'm telling you right now, Randy Shannon, defensive coordinator for Miami, he doesn't need to leave and just take any job out there. 
I think we all agree, and every coach I've talked to in the coaching fraternity agrees that Randy Shannon has a bright future as a head coach. It's just a matter of when and where, but he deserves a shot. Oh, Vincent Marshall, a quick shot. He's got the speed. Yeah. Takes it to the 10 yard line. So Houston went to a lot of quick stuff, and that's a 39 yard pass, because the ball may have been in the air for all of two and a half yards. Well, Marshall is right here. They're going to bring pressure here, and they're just going to find him very quick. It's a quick throw, a little fake to hold the linebacker, and then once they hit the seam there with Marshall, he's got tremendous speed. The thing I liked about it, you see those white guys that could really, white jersey guy trying to catch him? They ain't catching my man. He's Got fast. It. I'm telling you, he is as quick as the guys on Miami. That was a great play. It's yeah, first and goal, and Cobb. Got rid of it. That's a smart play. He had nobody open. Good play by Marshall. Got him down there. Here's Jill with more on the junior. That's Vincent Marshall, who he tries to emulate his play after. You know who he said? Santana Moss. He said he met him when he went on his recruiting trip for track. He said he looks the same. They're both little, but they're both really, really fast and quick. So he says he tries to play like him. He looked like him out there today. Be careful, yeah, Jill. There's yeah, a yeah. Houston Cougar hanging out behind. He did look like Santana on the run there. This is a great triple jump champion. As you see, the Conference USA indoor best in 2004. He's lined up in the slot down there, bottom of the screen. They run Jackie Battle. And only gain a yard. We'll have third and goal coming up from the nine-yard line. This is first guess, not second guess. I would not go for a field goal here. And you'll say why? If nothing else, if I don't get the touchdown, I leave the ball way down there, and Miami might take a long time to score. I would go, if I was coach, I'd go for it two times right now. Try to get something, because if he gets a touchdown, it's then psychologically, they're back in the ball game. Gucci, first uh, Conference USA preseason team, tight end. He's going to be the receiver, bottom of your screen, 82. Move over to the right, look back towards Cucci, who came back for the ball but couldn't reel it in. It's incomplete. Fourth down, and the field goal unit okay. will come off. We just talked about what Randy Shannon tries to do. This time, Tavares Gooden's going to come around trying to chase. Watch him recognize Marshall. You can't see. He recognizes Marshall and runs with him all the way back to the end zone. And he was coming on a blitz from the outside. Good recognition there by Tavares Gooden. Dustin Bell is one of the best field goal kickers Houston's had. 28 of 37. Although he's missed two this year from 26 yards. The lefty converts. And Houston is on the board. Well, a nice drive. Still, the Miami defense is not allowed a touchdown here in 2004. But the Cougs will not get bageled here tonight. 21 to 3. You get a look from Skycam as the Cougars get set to kick it off. On the board against Miami, 21 to 3. Nice drive. Two guys, 10 plays and 72 yards. The quick shot to Marshall. The big play off the drop. There is the man on special teams, Devin Hester. What did kickoff return he had last year? <laughs> Took about, eight, eight, again. about 100 yards in 10 oh. seconds. Yeah. Man. <laughs> they didn't want anything to do with it. Oh, Swibley get it away from him and kick it to John Beeson. The linebacker who used to be a fullback took it to the 38, and Jill Arrington has a guest. That's right. I'm here with Houston's athletic director, Dave Maggard, and you are also the athletic director in Miami in the early 90s. So tell us, how are these two programs similar? Well, you know, uh, in 1991, I was at Miami, and we played Houston at that time. Uh, we played on a Thursday evening ESPN game like we are this evening. Uh, University of Miami has a great program. You notice I didn't say a great team because they have a great program. They've had some great teams over the years. We are building a great team. You know, there are a lot of similarities from the standpoint of the areas. You know, uh, Miami is an area where you have a lot of opportunities to spend entertainment dollars. The same is true here in Houston. And so we need to be good. We need to be good. We need to we need to play this kind of game and we need to we need to grow from it. And uh, we have the right coach at our Bryles. We have the right approach and uh, we will become a great team. You know it was uh, a number of years ago the University of Miami thought about the possibility of dropping football. You see what they are now. They've been a powerhouse 
since 1983. So it could happen, and uh, we're going to work to make it happen. Well, do you think that this matchup and playing in these kind of games will help Houston get back to the level of football that they once were? I think uh, I think young players want to play against the best teams. I think they want to play on television. I think it helps recruiting. And so, yes, I think we have to play uh, some games like this. And, and uh, you know, Miami is a great team. This may be the great defense. This may be the best defensive team in the country uh, uh, right now. I mean, they've had some great defense, defensive teams in the past, but this is a great one. But, uh, no, I, I think we have, uh, I think we have capability of uh, doing what some of the other institutions have done where you're in a... Uh, well, good luck know. to you. Thank good you, luck to Jill. Houston and Thank your you. program. Mike, Appreciate back to you. you. Thank you, Joe. Dave Maggard, former Olympian. Shot put, 68 Mexico City. Third and one, Moss, who tripped on his way to the end zone on first down, picks up a first down with that 11-yard run. They love this play. They run it right, they run it left, they bring Olsen, who's in motion, coming back, and they're going to bring Tella also back to the backside. And then what you see is a change of pace with Tyrell Moss, the power back that complements Frank Gore's elusiveness very, very well. It's a nice one-two punch, and from what we understand from talking to the coaches, is Frank Gore and Tyrell Moss, it's competitive, but they have a very special bond as they work together. Moss, five carries, 47 yards. The fake reverse to Lance Leggett. Brother of Darnell Jenkins, that is incomplete. It hit the leg of an of an eligible receiver. So even though it didn't cross the line of scrimmage, that is not intentional grounding. If that would have been a lineman, it would have been an intentional grounding flag. We'll have second and ten coming up. This is a <laughs> Miami team who's offense in the past has always had that kind of home run threat there are more question marks but a lot of good answers for those question marks with the talent level of these players it's just who's going to emerge as the go to breakaway outside man on this team the limbs pass to Sinaris Moss picks up the first down at the 31 yard line one of the things uh, that Miami was always always very good at especially three of the last four years and there's Dan Werner the new offensive coordinator taking over for Rob Chudzinski who went to the Cleveland Browns as a tight end coach is that they have incredible balance and when I say balance it's not just the run to the throw balance in the pass game considering they still are one of the few programs to run the traditional line they love to throw to the tight end they love to throw to the fullback the receivers the, everybody gets involved and I think that's what they're trying to grow and get back to from the 31, Moss ran into Quatrain Hill, who was blocking for him. Ends up getting a yard to the 30-yard line. Rocky Schwartz, the strong safety, made the tackle lead. Schwartz come up there in a real good football position to get that play. I tell you what, Kurt's bringing up a good point. This is one of the few football teams in the country that has balance from the eye, is not going to the spread offense. Yeah. And I like it because you could do both in this situation. Now, Miami's situation right now is I like this kid, Lance Leggett, and Shararis Moss. Those are the two guys I think by the end of this year will be the stars on that side. They're good looking football players as receivers. Leggett and Moss. Mark it down on your calendar. I, I think Parrish, though, is still Parrish and Moore. It's just great depth. From the 30 Moss. Good pursuit by the defensive line to limit the game. Cade Lane at a Jersey Village High School here in Houston made that play. Dan Warner told us an interesting uh, thing this week. We talked to him about uh, the balance. He said, you know, we'll scout ourselves during the game. Yeah. And, and, and I'll talk to, to different assistants, and I have a guy that's tracking my play calling, and somebody's doing a good job because it's not only 14 and 12 right now. They have 10 first down calls, five first down runs, five first down passes. So whoever is scouting, is on top of things upstairs. Third down, they need to get to the 21 to keep it going or settle for a field goal. Berlin pressured, let it out high and incomplete. A little bit of pressure didn't allow Berlin to step into it. I know you're looking down here at the play made by Willie Gaston, but Joe Clay and Brian Brown were getting near the quarterback there. This is, I think, where Brock Berlin gets into trouble. The feet. See the feet? When he doesn't get a chance to get back, take the one hitch, deliver the football. Anytime you can get Brock Berlin to sit in the pocket, take a hitch, take a second hitch, and then a third, he really seems to struggle with his accuracy with throwing. 
officially 41 and John Petty is good from there. So Miami answers Houston's field goal with one of its own and it's 24 to 3 here in Reliance Stadium. When we come back we'll see if the Houston offense can keep it going look across the border at Oklahoma see where they USC and Miami are on coaching Kirk's top five back in Houston right after this. ESPN's College Football Prime Time. Brought to you by Bex Beer, who reminds you that life beckons and you're holding the key. And the new CircuitCity.com. Log on today for your chance to win a plasma TV makeover. Good to be here in Houston with our terrific College Football Prime Time Thursday night crew. 24 3 Miami. We look forward to seeing the games in a couple of weeks. When Louisville comes calling in the OB, the Orange Bowl. Boy, they have laid a couple of big hits on kickoffs here Ooh. so far. And no chance here as it is out of bounds. That's a flag. And we'll spot the ball at the 35 for Houston's offense. Gentlemen, your top five. That's a pretty similar top five right. there, men. I think the top two are much better than anybody else. And I got Auburn in there because they beat LSU. And uh, that's my top five. I have uh, Georgia in there at four instead of Auburn. Auburn did have the big win. Mm -hmm. uh, I just think Georgia's on the verge of becoming a more complete team and playing. They get Odell Thurman back. I think that'll help them after, after his three-game suspension. And Ohio State, Ohio State has that same formula. Great defense, special teams. You look at their schedule, they get a legitimate shot as well. How many yards did they have against NC State? 137 and six first downs. That's, that's unbelievable. And dominated the game. the game. Yeah, that's right. That's just the way it dominated. Yeah. It speaks uh, so well to what Jim Tressel's done with this program the last couple of years. Jackie Battles first down run. He's pushed down to 38. If you're just joining us, Anthony Evans, the running back who had 282 yards against Army last week for Houston, strained a calf muscle very early in the game, and he's out for the remainder of the contest. Lee, you talked about, let's see, when you get a lead, how you yes. play with it. And it I think that's obviously 24 to 3 midway through the second quarter. That is something to watch not only for this game, but for this year. That, that's what was so impressive last week with Miami playing Louisiana Tech, is they came out and take, took care of business. Like this, we got Phil Hawkins, the left tackle split out here as well. And they throw underneath very nicely to the tight end, Brett ba Blade Bossler, excuse me. And pick up a first down out at the 42 yard line. What they did that time is they had everybody to the left as receivers, but the tight end was still eligible, and they just hit it a quick pop pass. I like the theory right here of trying to confuse Miami because I promise you, ladies and gentlemen, they're not going to beat them with conventional football. I promise you that. And, and coach, you know oh. what it's like trying to get a team ready with the hours and the restrictions. Oh. I guarantee some of these formations they're throwing at them, <laughs> Miami has never seen. It's tough to adjust when you haven't seen it in practice. Prepared to the right side to Ryan Gilbert. This is really a creative, inventive, fun offense. And Lee, when you are a Houston in this situation where you're trying to build a program and get it going and build some excitement within your city, you've got to do things like this. No question about it. If I was an athletic director and I was on a middle league of a league or down, I'd definitely look for somebody with this kind of offense. I, the Texas Tech program is now a competitive league because they use this guy. This is an equalizer when you can't recruit equal players. From the 39-yard line, second down, quarterback starts in motion out of the gun and throws complete to Vincent Marshall at the 30. And the beauty is, you think this is all newfangled football. A lot of it is old-style football. This is about as old-style as it gets. Now, this, Lee, this, you got to help me out here with the era. Like, look, did you see the snap? Rockney? Well, you know what, that's, that's Duke Rockney. <laughs> Rockney had the flying formation, and you know why? When not Rockney used to do that, they now put a rule in it. You've got to set one second because Rockney's team used to take an advantage and wow, kill them. They got everything. Now look at this formation. Oh, they take root. Use root Newton Rockney That's for right. some XO points. Life is good. Show, show that again after the two-yard carry by Gilbert. so quick there. It, it, the quarterback takes off. The, the ball's going to be snapped way over there. <laughs> I mean, it, 
he ends up throwing the, the MVP of this offense is Sterling Donnie to the center because you don't know what he's going to have to do and how he's going to try to get the ball back to the quarterback. And here they come again with another one. Throw back to Perry McDaniel right at the first down line across the 20 yard line. You know what I like about these Houston guys? Is they don't feel like they can't compete. We know athlete wise it's not the same. They went to Michigan last year, got their hats handed to them, lost by 50 to Oklahoma, you know, 10 days ago. But they know that they are in a game where they don't have equal people. But this system, they enjoy playing it, feel like it gives them a competitive opportunity. Plus, that comes from their coach. I was very impressed. He reminds me of a Texas gunslinger, Art Glass. Really tough looking guy. First down run, Ryan Gilbert to the 17 yard block. The quarterback, Kevin Cobb, deserves a lot of credit, obviously, not only for being able to control all this confusion, but also the way he's, he's up to this point, they're not turning the ball over. I mean, he's he's in control of this situation. And you can see Miami, they're rotating players on and off the field. They're trying to point, communicate. They're trying to figure out who's got, who's on first right now. There, There's a lot of confusion in that Miami defense. Cobb started one of eight. Since then, he's six of eight. So he has settled down. They've uh, found some things that are working against Miami to move the ball down the field. Inside handoff to Gilbert over to the 16 yard line. This is a very difficult offense for the quarterback. One advantage is when you're in it since eighth grade as Kevin Cobb was at Stephenville High School. Now Art Bryles was the coach at Stephenville. He went to Texas Tech to be on Mike Leach's staff. The system stayed there and Cobb remained able to excel in that system 29 touchdowns 64 percent completion rate that's why he's able to come in as a true freshman and earn freshman of the year honors in this league last year he knew the system probably better than half the guys who were on the team that pass is knocked down by the blitzing safety brandon merriweather will have fourth down and a field goal opportunity coming up Unless they decide to go for it here on fourth down. No, okay. Art Browse does something different I've never heard about in college football. Every one of Art Browse's full-time assistants are on the sideline. He keeps two graduate assistants upstairs because he wants his assistant coaches to look at his players in his eyes. I've never heard of that in college football. All those offensive coaches. Now one offensive assistant coach upstairs. 33-yard field goal, and a penalty marker is down. This is pre-kick. We'll see who it's on. When he told us that, I, I thought... <laughs> I was looking over you. Know, I was really? Like, no, not even... Seven, eight, eight, seven on the kick and take. Not, not only the coordinators, but every, every coach. Every coach. Defensive coordinators upstairs. Okay, but I'm saying... But every on offense. offense. Yeah, every offensive coach. He wants him to look him in the eye yep. and talk to him. And remind, three of those four offensive coaches all came directly from high school because Art believes that the best teaching comes from the coaches from the high school level. Plus, it helps you in recruiting. Yeah, it helps for Houston try to reestablish some of those relationships here in the state of Texas. Back it up, so officially it is a 38-yard field goal now. Now, those are things you can't afford. The delay of game cost them five. And then Bell missed the field goal. So Miami will take over, still leading by 21. And while we're away and you're watching these messages, think about our Aflac trivia question. Two Miami Hurricanes drafted in the first round by a Houston NFL franchise. Answer coming up. Right next door to the Astrodome, Reliance Stadium seats 70,000. Number four, Miami. Been a long time since they've come down Texas way to play. And special teams, big first quarter score in the first minute of the game. And a short field has given Miami plenty of opportunities. Frank Gore and Tyrone Moss have each run for a touchdown. Teams have exchanged field goals here in the second quarter. Houston just missed one, so Brock Berlin and Miami starting from the 21. Greg Olson, transfer from Notre Dame. Redshirt freshman gets 11 yards, tackled by Wade Cole. Here is the block punt after three and out. Anthony Reddick against the goofy punt 
set up with the block. Tavares Gooden with the recovery. Miami then scored two more touchdowns to make it 21 to nothing. So if you add that to the 48 against Louisiana Tech and the 16 in a row they scored against Florida State, it's like an 85-0 run for the Canes. Tackle of Frank Moore there. That first down run. Don't you think the Miami defense is down there? They know that. They take pride in it. I mean, they're locked in on their assignments, but they know what kind of run they're on right now. Five is a good run. I don't care who you're it's not playing. Not bad. Yeah. Good way to start the year. Four, five, six, six quarters plus an O2. Berlin adjusts the play. It's second and ten. Gore with the fullback Kobe in a block for him. A marker comes down as Frank goes down at about the 41 yard line. Thrown in the spot where it's usually holding. And it is. So as they walk it back, let's see what Chris Fowler has uh, cooking up for halftime. I'm Mike at Steve Pontiac. High performance halftime report. We'll have the five teams, five questions. Preview the BYU Boise State game tomorrow and their game changing former of the week. I'll let you know if the Virginia Cavaliers are contenders or pretenders. We'll look at Clemson, Florida State, and examine which quarterbacks are the most pressure to perform. All that coming up at halftime, guys. Can't wait to see what headgear you've uh, got cooking for the second 30 minutes. Yeah, thank you, thank you, bud. We're working on that for you. I know you like those black hats. I can send mine with Kirk and Lee to game day. You can wear it on Saturday night. Looks very good in a black cowboy hat. Berlin the toss. There is Akeem Jala. And the, uh, the sophomore in New Orleans takes it out to the 32. Before third down, do you guys have a clue here? The two Canes who are first rounders, Houston right. NFL franchise? Yeah. Andre Johnson. Well, of course. I mean, come okay, on. I take Jim Kelly, Houston Gamblers. Good job. NFL franchise. Yeah, very, very good spot there. there. I know it's one, it's it's a tricky. It's not tricky. It's Alonzo Highsmith. Oh, okay. It's not tricky. No, it wasn't at all. I like Kelly better. Very good thought. I like the fact you went back deep there. That was a good my league. That was my league. USFL. Very good thought. Wrong, but the drop. Third down, they need to get to the 44 to keep the drive going, and Berlin's toss is caught by Roscoe Parrish. 46, pick up a 14, and a first down. This is important for Brock Berlin just to, again just to continue to build and continue to grow and this is I think the part of his game that has changed look how strong his arm is whether he's in the pocket or he has the athletic ability to get out when he feels pressure you won't ever question Brock Berlin's Brock Berlin's arm strength that he has this is also usually where he's most effective when he gets into the gun in the no huddle because he's just dropping back and letting it go the 46 Houston will bring some pressure Miami picked it up for Ryan Moore incomplete penalty marker back at the line of scrimmage all right we'll watch him with the flag and we'll visit with one of those two former Canes who is a first round draft pick of a Houston NFL franchise it's on Miami they've decided to take it or decline it not enough on the line, so you'll watch the decision while Jill visits with Andre Johnson. Jill? That's right. I'm with the star Miami wide receiver, now with the Houston Texans. So tell me, why is it that so many of you guys move on, yet you always come back and support your Hurricanes? Uh, I, I don't know what it is. It's just, a, you know, a great school and a great tradition. And, uh, you know, a lot of guys, when you when you go to the University of Miami, you know, there's a lot of sweat, blood, and tears, and you put a lot into the program, man. You know, you always want to come back and support the younger guys. Once a family, always a family. What do you think of this Hurricane team, and how good can they be? Uh, I think they're doing pretty well. Um, the defense is playing well. You know, the offense is, you know, getting better. Um, you know, they can get a little better. But I, as a team, I think they're doing very well. Andre, what does Larry Coker mean to this Miami program? Uh, Coke, Coach Coker is a great person. I mean, he's, you know, he's there when you need him, man. You know, even now when I go back, I always stop to his office, you know, just to go and speak to him. So he's a great person. 
All right, well, good luck. You had a nice catch last week in the touchdown. Good luck with your season. Go Texans. Back to you, Mike. Thank you, Jill. Andre had a touchdown catch in the loss to the undefeated Detroit Lions. Oh, what? Just had to slide that in there. I just reported Unde that. Just undefeated? Just the season ticket holder. <laughs> Lance Everson <laughs> right. dropped that last one. Almost had an interception. <laughs> this will be third down coming up. And 10. They're showing different types of pressure here. A little stunt up front. Trying to get to Berlin. Hey, the ball's free. And Houston has recovered. It was Brendan Pahulu. A true freshman, defensive MVP of the Texas All-Star Game, who came up with the recovery. Joe Clay, their best defensive lineman, forced the fumble. And what they did, they did a little loop stunt. Now watch the inside man coming right to the inside right here, and he strips the football. Now, it's very, very important that we talk about this. This is a no-huddle situation. Forget that quarterback running back and forth. they got to come out and throw a lot of passes because there's only 107 to go. They've got to get a touchdown. And they've been pretty close to getting a touchdown in the last yes, couple of drives. They they've picked it. it well. All timeouts remaining for Houston. Run. Gilbert to the 10. Pickup of 20. Out of bounds, too, to stop the clock. Outstanding call here by Houston. Miami's had their safeties up a lot. Look how deep they are. They're 15 or 20 yards deep, and Houston feels like we have to be able to run when Miami's going to keep their safeties that far back. And that time, that was a great call against the two safety low. Second first and goal of the night. Gilbert couldn't pop it outside. Lost a yard. Timeout Houston with 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 42 seconds remaining till halftime. Clay forced the turnover. Hopes his offense can turn it to points. Oh, this crowd here at Reliant Stadium trying to urge the Cougars on, see if they can make it look respectable here at the half. 24-3 is the score. Second and goal. Cobb moves as he takes the snap. Tough throw. Almost a pick six for Merriweather the other way. And it's a safety close on that ball, too. But I really like this guy out of a pop gun. Very trusted, dedicated free safety. And the last time a lot of people saw him last year, he was dealing with a game that we did with West Virginia, yeah. where he was the safety that got run over by uh, the great Wilson. running back, uh, Wilson, who got into, into the end zone. But he's changed. He is a corner who can hit you like a safety, and they use him to play some man to man responsibilities. Third and goal from the 11. Three options left, two right. Everybody covered. Cobb trying to make something up. Incomplete. Would have only been a gain of two anyway. Mark Dryles was trying to get a timeout, and there's a penalty marker down back at the 30 where the quarterback was. Maybe that's roughing the passer. It was. A couple more shots they'll get from about the five and a half yard line. And one thing's very important here with only 28 seconds to go. They've got to throw that thing into the end zone every single time, hoping for a pass interference or hoping for some kind of a good play. First and foul. Rough in the passer. Pass Number 92, defense. After this is going to go, first down. Orion Harris calls for the automatic first down flight. When you're 300 pounds and you chase a quarterback that far, sometimes you take that shot. Close call there. Tough to see from that angle, but... Third down, Harris should have known better even when it's a gray area like that. So, three more shots. Still two timeouts for Houston. 146 yards of total offense here in the first half. Cobb took the high snap, got it to Gilbert. He swarmed under. Houston will stop the clock here with 20 seconds to go. Gilbert has helmet knocked off as Orion Harris made up for the flag with a big knockdown.
Houston trying to get a touchdown to get a little closer here on college football primetime presented by Cooper Tires. It's been a 99 yard passing quarter for the sophomore Kevin Cobb. Try to find number 17, Vincent Marshall, somehow. Rolling towards Marshall, threw it towards Marshall. Marshall never looked for it. Very good thought, Lee. Well, they put, what they did is they put him in the backfield to try to isolate a man for man on the linebacker, figuring they outrun the linebacker. But the fastest guy that Houston's got can't even outrun the linebackers from Miami. That was a nice theory, but Miami's just too quick. Not only quick, you oh. knew it, I knew it, Mike knew it, Randy Shannon knew it, and the Miami defense knew. Probably want to keep an eye on 17. They had three guys around in that time. You run all that, you think maybe later on you can do something where you do the same kind of thing, come back to the other side, hope that you win the numbers game because everybody's paying attention to Marshall. Cobb doing this without his leading running back, Anthony Evans, and one of his best pass receiving options in Kendall Bryles. Unsure of what to do there, so they take their final time out here of the half. So you got to be careful with 17 seconds left that you can get this playoff and still have time to attempt a field goal if you're tackled shy of the goal line. What do you think of this Houston offense? Well, I, I said at the beginning of the show, the kind of offense they've got has a chance. If you protect Cobb, you got a chance to do something to make it exciting. Mm -hmm. But you can't beat Miami just throwing it around like this because Miami's too well coached. They've got too many athletes. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, this kind of offense has got a better chance than that. Than other people right. it needs to get it's a good like offense. Say, it's right? good name for the offense. <laughs> yeah. it, like you said, it's an equalizer. Yeah, it's an I mean, equalizer. At least it gives them a chance, oh, and they've, they've tried to spread Miami right. out with the four and five wide receiver look. And then, like you said in Armini, how do you attack speed? You can't go east and west. You've got to run right at it. When they've run the ball, they've had some success. But I like the fact that they're confusing Miami, and that's what's really helped yeah. them move the ball back and forth, up and down the field at times. The Pontiac High Performance Halftime Report. Sheriff Fowler in the studio with the guys of the five games, five questions, Thursday night staple, plus a preview of tomorrow night's game at 10 Eastern on ESPN, BYU, and Boise State, and the game-changing performance of last week. All right, Houston, can you get it in the end zone here on third and goal? And Cobb looks back at the quarterback, at the coach, excuse me, who reads the defense with him. Everybody looks back, what are we running? And it's got a signal from the sideline, very much like Clemson and West Virginia do. Third and goal. Cobb might run for it. He does. He scores. Touchdown, Houston. First touchdown of the year against the Miami defense. So after getting down to the nine and the 21 and the six, Houston finally able to punch it in. And Dustin Bell sneaks in the extra point. And it's 24-10. There you see the 11 plus quarters and the overtime the last time Miami's D allowed six. Very good strategy. What they did is spread everybody out for one reason. No linebackers. You see there's no linebacker in the middle. So once the quarterback breaks the entire lineman, he's got the touchdown. It's almost like a quarterback draw theory. But I'd love that they spread them out. No linebackers. Not only did they have, they were without a linebacker in the middle, they actually, Miami actually had seven defensive backs on the field there. And they were spread, actually six defensive backs on the field. And they were spread all over the field, chasing all those receivers, yeah. and it opened up nicely for Cobb, and he recognized it and got into the end zone. And right. such a big game, I'm sorry, Lee, for Art Bryles. Yeah. Remember, they lost to Oklahoma 63-13. They don't want to have another team, a, another great team, hang up a 50-point loss on them at home. He's trying to build a foundation, be a contender in Conference USA, and get people to believe in Houston football, because as he said, they've been off the radar for the last dozen years since that game in 91. count all these defensive backs one two three four five six all over the field and look at look at the linebackers or look at the linebacker in the secondary everybody chasing a wide receiver and the middle is left all alone for Cobb and he showed enough athletic ability to get in there. Remember as a 30-yard drive after the sack and the fumble. 
I like the way they came back and got that touchdown. They were more aggressive than everything. Remember one thing. You're not going to beat Oklahoma, Miami, and Houston. You don't get as many good football players. I'll finish that thought in a second. It's a little pop-up kick, hoping for confusion. It's brought down by the fullback, Cobia. Kyle took it out to the 37-yard line. Lee, before you finish your thought, let me remind everyone that tomorrow night, 10 Eastern on ESPN, BYU at number 21, Boise State. Talk about the BCS Busters. Boise State tested along the way. They'll be hosting BYU on the blue field in Idaho tomorrow night. 10 Eastern, 8 Mountain, 7 Pacific here on ESPN. That Boise State is an exciting football team, but as Kirk said before, that BYU defense is really weird in a game Southern California. A lot of trouble until halftime to figure it out. That should be a good game to watch. The lone turnover of the half turned into seven points. Miami, a four-touchdown favorite, leads by two touchdowns, and the Canes will get the ball to start the second half. Oh, they're into it here in Houston. 24-10. We got a little bit. Thank you, Chris, and welcome back to Reliant Stadium. Punching all your digits on your phone there. You make your vote. Quarter number three, they punched up some uh, right calls for Houston as the game went on. As we checked the game track for the first half, the very first drive was three and out. A block punt, a recovered touchdown. Anthony Reddick with the block. Then Frank Gore, a four-yard touchdown run, 14-0. Ended up making it 21-0 in Miami in the second. But Houston responded after exchanging field goals and Kevin Cobb touchdown run and a ball game. 24 to 10. Miami's going to get it first to start the third quarter. You know, guys, Houston's defense overall has not done too bad a job. The Canes have run 36 plays and Brock Berlin in the offense only 149 yards to show for. Houston has limited Miami's big plays. Dan Werner and Larry Coker talked about they need to get the passing game and they need to get some big plays from that part of their offense. First half, they were unable to do that. A little adjustment here as Dustin Bell has not kicked it deep yet tonight. So Miami has taken their return men up to the 15 yard line. Bell bangs one through and Miami lets it through. And get it into the hands of the return men quickly. Well covered and Darnell Jenkins only takes it out to about the 38 yard line still good field position but guys Houston with that late score able to stay around in this game now how can they hang around through the third quarter and give themselves what everybody says a chance in the fourth well first of all I think Kirk brought a good point and defensively they got to keep everything in front of them inside of them avoid the long play and offensively they got to throw the ball in first and ten because they had 14 runs on first ten and on I mean, three passes. Most important thing is this is a game of yep. emotion. College football's emotion. They ended the half on a high note. They have to stop Miami on this drive to get themselves to continue that momentum. I mean, Frank Gore running up uh, the middle for about 15 yards, or rather Tyrell Moss, I beg your pardon. Yeah, so. that, that's, that's probably what they want to try to avoid yeah. here to start that's this uh, third quarter. A momentum stopper. I mentioned the yardage. Look, Miami only ran it for 65 and threw it for 84 in that first half. So a Houston defense that gave up big chunks of yards to Oklahoma, much more sound. Short field, field positioning, their special teams plays made a big difference. First and 10, one more time with Tyrone Moss. He gets it out to the 42 yard line. That Brock Berlin play there, guys, in that first half. Kind of how he has throughout the last year and, and parts of uh, this year. There's been times where he looks like, you know what, I think he's starting to get it. I think he's really starting to get comfortable. And then, you know, he'll make a, a poor decision. He'll get inaccurate with the football. And I think it's just a matter of him kind of working out to Kingsley. And the more experience he gets, you got to think the better he's going to become. Berlin, you saw the numbers, 10 of 18. Only threw it 14 times in the blowout over Louisiana Tech. Here, he's brought down. That is the second time that Joe Clay has gotten in there and got the job done. Joe Clay, who is uh, the one player who they think is going to be a big deal off this defensive line with a sack. Well, this is speed. This is just being able to come off the corner there and attack Chris Myers, one of the more talented Miami offensive linemen, mm -hmm. just coming to the outside. Nothing fancy, just using his quickness to come into the out. It's a three-year starter. Too. It sure is. Third and 12. Berlin's 
throw is knocked down by Bryant Brown. The strong side linebacker was the middle linebacker, and they switched them this game. 45 did a nice job just eyeing the quarterback. What Bryant Brown that time is they did a little stunt, but he stayed in the middle. If you'll watch him sit right there in the middle, he's watching it, watching it. He can't get to him, nice. so therefore he jumps high. The rule is, is if a defensive lineman cannot make penetration, stop where you are, leap, and try to defend the ball. That was a very nice play. Rocky Schwartz, the starting strong safety, is back. Brian Monroe will try to put Houston inside the 10. Did that on his first punt. Fair catch called for and made by Schwartz. Back at the eight. Long field, but Houston gets Miami's offense off the field after another 39-yard Monroe kick. Coach the Home Depot. Coaching adjustments. Well, first of all, they got to change up if I'm Houston. They got to change more passing plays on front. Look at this. 14 runs, three passes. Now, Randy Shanahan is up there charting that. He's playing run defense on first and 10. But Miami, they got to get to this cop. And I'll tell you why. The longer they leave this was Houston offense in there, the more trouble they're going to get. And remember, I think Miami has got to set the tone on defense because their offense is struggling. Last possession for Houston was the first touchdown and offense has scored against the Canes this year. A couple of yards for Ryan Gilbert. If you weren't with us in the first half, Anthony Evans injured his calf muscle and is out for the game. Evans had a great game against Army, running for 282 yards. Really put some fire back in the program here last year by getting to a bowl game. Dana Dimmel took over this program for three years and really it, it was uh, kind of running to the ground. They had an 0 and 11 year back in 2001. Gil, uh, Gilbert runs it again. He's a couple of yards shy of the first down before third down. Let's see what Houston said at halftime. Jill Arrington. Well, Coach Riles told me he found out what he knew coming into this game. They cannot continue to make mistakes against the team like Miami. He also said they're going to continue to do on offense what they've been doing. Even if it doesn't work, they're going to try, try again. They're a little nervous about kickoffs because of the speed of Miami. They said they just need to clean up their play and get to their action. What they learned, they can compete in this game, and they believe it. We saw that he uh, played for Bill Yeoman in the first half. You see there, first time, first year success like Yeoman had. And a great effort from Jackie Battle. The sophomore gets a first down against Miami. So backed up at their own eight. Three runs. Well, they picked up a first down. Gain of 14 there. Mike, we were looking at tape. Do you remember yesterday? Every yes, single time on short yardage, they went over the left side of Phil Hawkins and Ray Swan. And that's exactly, Kirk, what they did. There. They think that's their best side. That's where they go. That time, they got a good job of a, not a surge of the offensive line. Got to the second level. The linebackers. And that's what opened that hole up. Jackie Battle had three touchdowns in that bowl game. A very entertaining uh, game. They lost to Hawaii. Battle with the carry there. That game got a little silly. Uh, that was the second time in the year that at Hawaii there was a game where there was too much silly stuff. Extracurriculars. Players, fans getting involved. And Mike Cobb controlling this offense very well with the different personnel groupings. That time he got up, got the team to the line of scrimmage before Miami could get set. Able to get another good push up front. Look at this. They're running the ball here, right? Adam, guys, first down with Ryan Gilbert. Does what they do offensively with many people in many directions allow them to run right out of Miami team? That's the only way you can run out of Miami is all this craziness to the outside. Watch the effort by the center, Sterling Dotty. After he makes this, you know, he's, he's worried about the snap count. Watch him bear crawl and get up to the linebacker. Just enough of that linebacker to push him out of the way and to be able to pick up the first down. This offensive line's working pretty well together up there. Sixth run of the drive. Up to the 46-yard line. You guys had six runs and about 37 yards here in this drive. And what Lee said is exactly right. When you're an underdog, and a big underdog at that, you come into a game and you get down 14 to nothing in the first quarter before you know what could even happen, all of a sudden, you look around, you survive that, you're down 14, you're starting this third quarter, you're starting to move the ball, you become more and more confident. There's a stick. John Beeson came up from his linebacker's spot to start. The message from Miami, we've had enough 
of you running between the tackles on us. You know, our Bryles told us the fact that, you know, they're a spread offense and all that information, but he said that a lot of the offensive plays he's running are the same theories that Bill Yeoman used when the Beer offense was famous here years ago when he played. Wing back coming in and blocking, little things like that. Very successful. Miami changing a lot of personnel, just getting settled defensively. Important third and four. Ball came out as the fullback. Shermer lost it. It's picked up by Miami, and Baraka Atkins will take it all the way for a back-breaking touchdown. Shermer on the second effort got out there to get the first down, and as he was spinning, he lost the ball, and Atkins, the sophomore from Sarasota, took it the distance. Meanwhile, Roy Swan, the left guard, was injured behind the play. Must be something about... 26 when you wear a Canes jersey and you wear 26 because the tradition continues from Sean Taylor to Anthony Reddick who made another big play to jar that ball loose after the score a sports by conduct number 98 on the scoring team he'll pay for that by the way we'll talk about that in a second Anthony Reddick who came up with a big block punt earlier and this is great effort by the fullback right there <laughs> He's just trying to extend himself to pick up the first down. Reddick, do you see that? That's he just coaching. pushes in right there. Hand right on the football to jar it loose. And then once the ball's on the ground, then it's a race to the goal line. That's called stripping. Yep. Randy yeah. Shanahan coached a couple of years for the Miami Dolphins, and the NFL does that a lot better than college football, although college football players are now being taught to strip and punch the football loose. A 52-yard fumble return for Atkins. And Petty adds the extra point and the air out of the balloon for Houston. Well, Anthony Reddick had a big play in the first quarter, blocked a punt. Houston with momentum all on the ground. Go get the ball. Knock it out. Miami scoops and scores, and the Canes on top by 21. Shimmer makes a mistake there, but this is a great coaching by Philip Montgomery the Young, running back coach. He comes up and gives him encouragement, lets him know, look, this is not the end. We're going to call on you again. Make sure you get back in there good. I'd like that positive approach because that's the only way during a game you can get your guys to play better. Shermer, the senior fullback who hadn't carried the ball at yeah. all tonight, scraping for that extra yard. They had run it eight times over 40 yards going right at Miami. Going to pick up the first down with that extra effort, but both of those miscues, the punt block and the fumble return, caused on um, plays by the freshman out of Fort Lauderdale, Anthony Reddick. Now the Atkins unsportsmanlike conduct flag pushes him back 15, so this kickoff comes from the 20-yard line. And a hit the whole opportunity for Donnie Avery, who's past the kickoff man, and all the way to the 31-yard line. Sonaris Moss, the wide receiver, ended up making the play, but a very nice return puts Houston in good field position. Oh, Miami gave Houston some of their own medicine with the squib, but Avery, because of the speed, and somebody must have not only a good block, but got out of their lane, and it was very simple for Avery because of his speed. Pretty good effort by Monroe just to hold on before Moss could come over and finally bring Avery down. And that's a very fine open field tackle by a wide receiver. Moss made a nice tackle there and brought him down. I like the fact that he wrapped him up, brought him down, although he's an offensive player. So the return was 49, and this first down run goes nowhere with Ryan Gilbert. Baraka Atkins has scored the touchdown. Join Roger McIntosh to make the play. Kirk, you were talking about how Baraka Atkins will be addressed with what happened that excessive celebration flag after the touchdown. But well, we talked this week with Randy Shannon, the defensive coordinator, and Larry Coker, and we talked about the discipline that Miami plays with. And the coaches said, quite frankly, we demand it of them. If they celebrate individually, if they bring individual attention upon themselves, they're going to be dealt with, whether it means sitting them down or dealing with it in practice. Brock Atkins will have to deal with that with his coaches. Big shot, Cobb, flag down as Marshall was being hassled on the way down the field. I've got one question about that, Kurt. Why didn't they sit him down? Yeah, I know. All right. I know. I mean, that's really good 
lip Good service. Good philosophy, but great, you got to follow I through. Would, I would have liked to see him this series maybe sit down. Valuable lessons. Yep. Atkins scored his first career touchdown with that fumble return. That's not only your theory, it's just based on what they told us, how they yeah. usually deal with these kind There's of receiver. situations. Yep. First down. Holding up pass interference, 10, not 15. Right there, McIntosh grabbed the hold of the jersey of Vincent Marshall. Marshall knew it right away. I like Kevin Cobb. I, I liked him last year as we watched Houston. Yeah. You know, win some important games for them and emerge. And watching him here tonight, he really has to do a lot with this offense. So much asked of him. Jackie battled the carry down to the 19-yard line. And again, if you weren't with us at the top, he was in this offense way back in the eighth grade. Mark Bryles at that time was the head coach at Stephenville High School. And you see number five there, Bryles? That is our son, Kendall Bryles. He was a safety over at Austin, University of Texas, transferred here so he could have the opportunity to play for his dad. But he has a torn oblique muscle. It happened in the game this past Saturday and is out today. The trainer said in 30 years of athletic training, he's never seen a torn oblique muscle. It's uh, why Bryles is on the bench tonight. Cobb, good throw and run for his back, Ryan Gilbert. First down at the 10-yard line. Well, those of you just joining us, we're in Reliance Stadium, Houston, Texas, the home of the Texans. And the Houston Cougars able to play a game here in this beautiful downtown facility as the number four team in the land, Miami, has come calling. Houston lost earlier this year at Oklahoma 63-13. They are far more competitive in this game tonight than they were two weeks ago. A special team score and a defensive score has helped Miami get to 31. Job coming down by John Beeson again to make the tackle on Ryan Gilbert. Art Bryles running back. Bryles, the second year head coach here at Houston after three years as an assistant coach with Mike Leach over at Texas Tech. And if you're just tuning in, the quarterback Cobb comes over after every play and they have a huddle and they all get in the huddle. Every single offensive skill player gets in the huddle, and then only a handful of them run out onto the field. That is to confuse the Miami defense and make them hurry to get their own personnel out there and adjust to what Houston just threw on the field. This is second down, the sophomore Cobb. Oh, would have been a touchdown. But Blaine Bossler couldn't hang on to it. Maybe it would have been a touchdown. They may have stuck him right at the goal line. Well, you, get momentum going. When you're playing the Miami Hurricanes and you get a big kickoff return, you just can't afford to do these things. You, you got to make the catch. Gets you down inside the two or you know two or three yard line, possibly into the end zone. But you just, if you want to compete with Miami, you can't have that happen. In baseball, what do you get? One good pitch, they say, every at bat. And if you miss it, good luck. We'll see you next at bat. Houston calling a timeout here. They're running people off the sideline. Mark Hopkins, the other wide receiver, was coming in. Would have had a substitution infraction if they didn't take the timeout. So they get one here. Miami leads by 21, but Houston's knocking on the door. Be right back. Reliance Stadium, as you see from earlier this afternoon, right next door to the Houston Astrodome. So many great moments in that uh, building. Think of the Houston UCLA game back in 1968. Great college basketball game. Love you, Blue. The Earl Campbell shows on oh, Monday yeah. Night Football when the Oilers were going. The Astros with some memorable games. And when Houston played college football, and there was the warehouse. Andre Ware's house. House. How well the quarterback played. Kevin Cobb trying to make a play here. Up top. It's pulled in by Coochie, the tight end. Oh, now they say incomplete. I thought he had pulled it in there, but. Unable to gain control of the ball. Uh, Coach, our process, wait a minute. You were saying touchdown down there. Let's see what happened. Boy, is that a risky throw? Oh. But almost a phenomenal yeah. catch. Ball definitely came loose. Tavares Gooden didn't even yeah. see the ball, but he's ripping, trying to get his hands on it. What an effort there by Cucci to make that catch. Try to get the mismatch from his Cucci 6-5. He was a preseason all-conference tight end for Conference USA. I like the theory. It just didn't execute it right. 
Quinton Bell from 27 with a make from 26 earlier and a miss from 38. Uh, Dustin Bell, excuse me, knocks it in and it's 31 13 as the senior from here in Houston connects on the field goal. We talked about some of the Houston history when they played next door in the Astrodome. Some of the great numbers Andre Ware put up. And at halftime, the 1989 Heisman Trophy winner was honored. Dave Magger, the athletic director, among those out there to welcome him as uh, Phil Yeoman, former great head coach, Jack Cardi as well. Andre gaining entry to the College Football Hall of Fame. There's the plaque there. And Andre's our ESPN colleague on the sideline now with Jill Arrington. Jill? Oh, that's right. I'm here with Andre, you superstar. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you very much. What does it mean to you to be inducted in the College Football Hall of Fame this year? Well, you know, it, it, it means a lot. You, know, you get to share it with your teammates, and it's a lot of hard work. Uh, you, you just persevere through so much. And to be able to have all the guys here with me, that was a special part of it all. Because, you know, we, we created a lot of competition while I was there, and it was just a good time. Good. Speaking of competition, Kevin out there is up against some tough competition. What kind of advice, I know you keep in touch with him, have you given him on this season? Well, just approach the season. All the guys, even though he's a young quarterback, they're going to follow him, and he, he has to prepare, and they will watch his every move. So don't loaf a step in practice. Give it everything you have. Those guys will follow you. Tell us a little bit about your working. You're a broadcaster now. No longer the good old days. Tell us about that, your game this weekend, Northwestern Minnesota. What do you expect? Well, we're excited. I, I uh, work with two good guys, Eric Collins and Jimmy Dykes, and we have a lot of fun. It's been phenomenal, the experience with ESPN. And, you know, the Cougars showed up tonight. We're on ESPN, and they've made a game of this thing. All right. Great to see you. Congratulations. Thank you, Mike, back to you. Absolutely, Jill. We look forward to listening to uh, Andre and Eric and Jimmy. This Saturday night. Devin Hester making people miss. A flag is down as Hester gets spun down out at the 37 yard line. Joseph Gonzalez made the tackle. Well, as they sort out the flag to take us back, Lee, uh, you yep. were doing ESPN games. You made a lot of trips down here to Houston those days. Yes, didn't I you? did. Andre Ware was one of my favorites. Boy, what a, as good a football player he was, Kirk and Mike, he's even a better human being. And he was such a great, great guy for college football. In fact, I was in his house the time that the uh, Detroit Lions uh, drafted, drafted him. him. I was yep. right there with him. That's great. Andre is 63% completions, 46 touchdowns back 15 years ago, 1989. And uh, as Jill mentioned, he's a commentator now for us and our ESPN family. And on ESPN2, those guys will be covering Minnesota Northwestern on Saturday night. 31-13 to score. And remember, 14 of Miami's 31 have come via special teams or defense. Tyrone Moss, open field, room to run, trying to pick up a Ryan Moore downfield block, and he's knocked out of bounds at the 49. A pickup of 37 on the play. It's just a matter of time until you saw Tyron Moss get out. It's the power play. The backside guard comes around. It's not great blocking on the front side, but it is exceptional vision by Tyron Moss as he cut back and found the open lane. He's been flirting with it, but this time he's able to keep his balance. And the key thing is this, this guy is 221 pounds. He's got one of those 185 scat backs, and he's got quick movement. Now, the key with him is he's got really good football balance, and his feet are never really close together. That's why I like the way he runs. D.J. Johnson, a first-team junior college All-American, is the player injured for Houston. Came over here this year from Garden City Community College. He uh, played his high school ball here in the Houston area, so he was injured behind that play that took Moss over 100 yards on the night. As they check on Johnson, we'll step out for a second. ESPN's College Football Primetime. Brought to you by Aflac. Ask about it at work. And Michelob Ultra. Lose the carbs, not the taste. The University of Miami's first game in a retractable roof stadium. D.J. Johnson injured before. Helped off the field. Looked to be a leg injury. Meantime, Miami has first and ten. On the Cougar side of the field, and once again, it's Tyrone Moss. We have not seen much from Frank Gore here tonight. Gore did 
have a touchdown on that early first quarter drive. Uh, has not run much after that, just six carries for eight yards. Remember, he is coming off an ACL injury for the second consecutive season. Heard on a Thursday night, wasn't it? When we were there, yep. uh, fifth game of the season last year. And they did play on Saturday, so maybe the short week is part of the reason that we're not seeing more of Gore here tonight. And at this point, you really don't have to play him, so why not give him as much rest as you can? Brock Berlin's pass is complete to Akeem Jalla. Sophomore out of New Orleans picks up the first down with a gain of nine. I'm really convinced the more I watch Brock Berlin, it's more about his feet than it is anything else. When he's able to get back into the pocket and have balance, look how, when he's comfortable, look how tight the spiral is, the ball's on the money. But I think when he gets uncomfortable back in the pocket, he tends to throw off his back foot and he tends not to be as rhythmic in his drop. I've seen him be most uncomfortable when there's somebody in his face. If I was coaching against him, I'd make sure I put somebody in his face all the time. Five minutes on a turning third quarter clock. Roll up the big boys to block for Moss. He takes it out to the 36 yard line. Oh, well, gentlemen, BYU is. You've seen a brutal schedule here at the start of the season. They go to Boise. They've taken on Notre Dame at Stanford, Southern California, and now Boise State looking to go 4 0. Remember that Friday night a couple of weeks ago? I watched Boise hang 53 on Oregon State. After, after getting down. Yeah, was it yes. 14? Or, they were down early in that game. See a good team when you watch Boise State tomorrow night. And a great young coach. I say young, he's a great coach in Dan Hawkins. Moss out to the 33 yard line. Anytime you're out of the top six conferences, you're talking, quote, BCS busters. And here are some of those teams. Utah, who we saw the opening Thursday night, still rolling at 3 0. Where their big remaining games will be at San Diego State. Fresno State and Boise State beyond tomorrow night's game. A big game, October 23rd. That's what I'm buying a ticket going to see myself. You will be in Idaho yourself. You're going to buy a ticket. I'm going to go myself. Okay. That, that could be the game of the year everywhere. Fresno, Boise. Third. College game day should be there. Sal was uh, kind of hinting at that earlier as well. Third and five. Quatrin Hill is in there to block as Berlin is pressured and throws. It's complete. The mark will keep Ryan Moore a half yard short of a first down. It's fourth down at the 29 yard line. Now that. Rock Berlin showed me something on that one because there was a guy coming in right in his face and he stayed right there and delivered a shot for it. That was the that was the best pass that I've seen him go in a long time. Watch him. If you left you a picture, the guy's gonna come. He sees him, he stays right there and still throws the ball straight. Nice play, Brock Berlin. Nice throw, terrible spot. Fourth and one. Run. Moss. Got there. And more to the 15. Penalty markers down as they bounce it to the outside. A Miami player held, and it's coming back. Tied in. Greg Olson wants the ball pushed to the outside. Wrapped his arm around the linebacker and nearly tackled him. That's going to back it up uh, from the 29 back to the 40. So instead of going for the first down or a field goal, they're now out of field goal range. So Olsen, this Notre Dame transfer, who uh, was at summer camp at Miami, followed his brother Chris by going to Notre Dame. They've both since transferred. Uh, he is now back on the field in a punching situation. He's the deep snapper for Brian Monroe. Devin Hester chasing. Or that's right, Hester, beg your pardon. It's Entrell Roll getting there. And down two, the three. But <laughs> Monroe's, every, it was his three punts inside the 10 tonight. Yes, he is. He's kicking well. Remember, that was a shaky yeah, spot for them was. last year. He kicked well against Florida State. Yep. Helped them in that game. And punts have been down at the four, the nine, and the three. Well, they win tonight, they go to three and oh. Some time off before Georgia Tech. We see them against Louisville on a Thursday night. 
Couple of road games on Tobacco Road in the ACC. Boys? As far as I'm concerned, huh? the only game they have a chance of somebody competing with them at Virginia in Charlottesville. Agree 250%. Remember, the first football team to beat Florida State in the ACC was in Charlottesville. It was Virginia, and I still think I like Kirk's idea. I still think that's the toughest game they've got away from home against Virginia. You're speaking of the Virginia-Florida State game. Yes, excuse me, I'm on sorry. On Thursday night. Yeah. Now, I also think that if North Carolina State could get any kind of an offense, I think North Carolina State's offense can play with this Miami defense. The problem, I mean, defense, yeah. The they, problem isn't they, the skill, it's that quarterback. Yeah, they, no, that's when Jay Davis really looked, uh, looked confused last weekend. This is going to be considered a run. It was a backwards pass to Vincent Marshall. Break three, along with Tavares Gooden, over there to make the play at the eight-yard line. It's uh, just strange to see those teams on Miami's schedule after their yeah. a decade plus a couple of year run in the Big East, very dominant in the Big East, along with Virginia Tech. Moving to the Atlantic Coast Conference this year, Boston College comes in to make it an even dozen next year, and then after that, the uh, ACC will be split into two different divisions of six teams each. It's one 11 team division this year with no championship game. And next year they'll have 12 and a championship game that's going to be in Jacksonville. Third down, Kevin Cobb got it to Matt Shermer, the fullback who fumbled earlier, able to pick up the first down out at the 20 yard line. Now you see what we talked about. Coach Philip Montgomery talking to him and giving a balanced talk. You're going to be okay. We're going to need you later. It's a perfect situation. Jimmer gets the ball, keeps the ball, and moves forward. I'd like the, that young coach going up and giving him a positive yep. spin on it. I really did like that. Sometimes you see coaches trying to yeah. lose it and get after a guy, and that's that's good for Sunday or Monday in the film room. Yeah. You could tell that was positive reinforcement after making a crucial error earlier in this game. Seven point error. Yep. First down handoff to Ryan Gilbert. Gains just about a yard as we're inside of a minute here. Quarter number three. I'm exhausted watching Kevin Cobb go over to the sideline every play. Since it's on the far hash, the 20. He's not going to get all the way in there this time. He's going to. It's fourth quarter, getting close to the fourth quarter. He's just waiting for the relay race. What do you got? What is it? I mean, really, no joke. That's got to wear him down a little bit, don't you think? Or would you have enjoyed doing that? No. Yeah. Extra conditioning for Cobb, I would think, year round. Be in shape to run this offense. Just get the playoff. It's play action. It's trouble. It's a sack. Cobb was down already when Brian Potter jumped back down on him. If you really wanted to be technical, you could have called that uh, a personal foul. There was no malintent, but it's what happened, not what you meant to happen. In any case, no flag and a sack, and we'll have fourth down when we get to the fourth quarter. 14 points, special teams and defense. You can't give the Canes extra opportunities if you want to be the king of the world and shock the world. 31-13 Miami, off we go to quarter four. Tonight's game, every college football Thursday primetime game brought to you in stunning high definition. Miami's touchdown in the third was scored on a fumble recovery. Baraka Atkins took it back 52 yards and that is how the Canes put the seven on the board and they lead 31 13 as we begin the fourth quarter with third down and 14 for Houston. Kevin Cobb their quarterback underneath throw is complete to Donnie Avery but the speedster is stopped four yards shy of the first down by Greg Freed and the Cougars will kick it away. This is a scouting report by Randy Shannon understanding like a lot of teams there's going to be a side adjust from the quarterback they blitz and trail roll knowing that they're going to have to throw it and then there is Greg three there to make the tackle well short of the first down Greg three has 16 tackles tonight wow. obviously Houston's offense leads to it he's got to wrap them up and knock them down 16 Devin Hester awaits Justin Laird kicks it away from him 
a perfect punt. It's exactly what you want to do perfect. against Hester. 48 yards and out of bounds, and here is Jill Arrington. Well, Coach Riles preached to his team before the game and at halftime, in order to compete with a team like Miami, you cannot make mistakes. You've got to play smart. That has not been the case today. We're talking about turnovers, this blocked punt, dropped passes. Every time they got a drive going, it seemed like they self-inflicted, had turnovers, and couldn't stay in the game. That's not going to happen. When you're playing a team like Miami, they're not going to let you get back in, and if you don't take advantage of those opportunities. Mike? Good point, Joe, and I thought those last two that you saw there in the third quarter were really killers because our Bryles team had battled back in there. 24-10, they were driving down the field, running the ball from the shadow of their own goalpost. Brock Berlin on first down, going to load up, try to hit Ryan Moore with a big shot. Came back and adjusted, but couldn't pull it in. It's incomplete. Flag down, back at the line of scrimmage. A lot of times you take a chance here, thinking the safety is going to bite up. This time, Schwartz does a good job of getting back. Moore, though, adjusts to the football. He did everything except make the difficult catch. It's a great name, Rocky Schwartz. <laughs> You've been ready to hit somebody like that with that name. Kevin and Nels will receive a downfield on the offense. You know, we were talking earlier about the ACC. It's going to go to 12 teams to climb that penalty. I would. They're going to take it and back it up. All right. ACC Five going hours. to uh, 12 teams in 2004 when Boston College comes in. They are declining the penalty. They'll make it second and ten instead of first and fifteen. Brian Moore holding Shake his head off. there. Shake it off. Come on, Ryan. That, was, that would have been a tough catch. Guy that dropped three balls, three key opportunities against Florida State. You can tell that whether, I don't know if he's banged up a little bit. But... You're right. He dropped three against Florida State. It was really bumped. He dropped only two all of last year, according to the coaches. Darnell Jenkins hit after a short gain of only about a yard and a half. So here's how the ACC is going to line up when they do go to 12 teams in 2005 with Miami on the side with Duke, Georgia Tech, North Carolina, Virginia, and Virginia Tech, and importantly, Florida State on the other side, so they could meet again in a conference championship game after meeting to open the season. And I would suggest, can I make a Thursday night suggestion? Yeah, yeah. One of those divisions must be named the Corrigan Division. Has to after Gene Corrigan, the great commissioner of the ACC for so many years, and uh, one of the best college administrators ever. Third and eight, puts his on. Berlin is down. Guys, Houston's defense has played uh, okay here in this uh, second half, but keep from the second quarter on. Well, they've done enough defensively to keep themselves in the game. I mean, yeah. the way this game started, getting down 14, you're thinking, all right, let's talk BCS, let's get ready for the weekend. <laughs> but they've made some adjustments in defensively. I think they're, they're gaining a lot of confidence on that side of the football. But I think the way Miami's playing probably has helped them. I don't think Miami's a very good offensive football team. Not good enough to win a national title. Right now, from what I've seen, they're not good enough really? to win a national really? title on defense. No question about uh, On offense. On offense, excuse me. Brian Monroe, tough to pin him inside the 20 this time. Well, a lot of stuff going on behind the play now. This ball is down at the 39-yard line. So Houston down 18 will be in a must-score situation after that 34-yard kick. We'll watch the Cougars try to get on the board and talk about some of the early season surprises that we saw with our own eyes. Back here at the last Super Bowl site, Reliance Stadium, Houston. You guys love this place, huh? Oh, this is a great place. Oh, beautiful. What a beautiful. booth, too. Can you get used to this. Stu and Sue's have Sports Center coming up in a little bit. Brock Berlin talking to uh, Ryan Moore over there on the sideline. Berlin uh, threw up a pass for Moore. He couldn't pull in and looked to bang up his foot a little bit as well in the process. He heard Brock say, forget about it. Kind of what Kirk was talking about before, the drops that have plagued Ryan in this early season. First down for Kevin Cobb in the Houston offense. Ryan Gilbert carries, takes it to the 42-yard line. 
this Miami defense had not allowed a touchdown to be scored upon it by Florida State or Louisiana Tech's offense and it, uh, put up some gaudy numbers but Houston has been able to move the ball probably a little bit better than some people expected tonight. That's because it's a high risk offense. They take a lot of chances. They do a lot of unconventional things and they're going to make some good plays. So we talked about in the preseason pre uh, show but when it gets down to it Miami has not rushed the passer as well with those front fours I thought they would I thought they would not cop right out of here but they haven't been able to get to them. Pick up of two second and eight. Once again the junior from Dallas. Gilbert carried and he lose the ball. Miami thought that they had their hands on it when Javon Nansen went down to get it. He did not. A well, third down ahead. And Lee said I think the word tonight is unconventional. Yeah. Houston runs so many different formations and they Miami's been confused in a lot of cases and I think that has allowed Houston to have some success both running and at times throwing the football tonight. Jackie Battle now comes in the game stands next to the quarterback Cobb. Fake it to battle Cobb runs and gets a left shoulder plant from Nanton. Out of Miami will have fourth down and a decision for Bryant. You can see even Miami's defense running on the field late last second adjustments because they're they're adjusting to Houston's personnel grouping and then Javon Nanton does come in and keep Cobb short of the first down but it's it's you have to be mentally alert at all times you can't go to sleep for just a second when you're playing against this Houston offense because there's so many different looks. We'll try to go for it here on fourth and a couple. Trying to get to the 49. A little pop pass was covered. Cobb tried to run for it depending on the mark as the ball was taken out of his hands. Looked to be a hair short by the initial look. Spot is somewhat generous, and we'll get a measurement. Now he's going to be short. short. I think Art Pyle's on. He's ready to play. Yeah, he's he's good looking gunslinger. <laughs> the thing that I think tonight, if you look at the football teams, the thing that is a disappointment in me is the consistency in the Miami offense. They ran some good plays, make some good plays, but from what I have seen in the Miami offense, unless they get sharper, when they get on the road against really good defensive teams, Houston's not a good defensive team. Oklahoma scored, what, 63, 63. against them? Hello. I mean, they got to score yeah. more points. You know what I think we're missing? Yeah. What is it's it? the big plays from Parrish and more. Yeah. I mean, we, we, the receivers as a group yeah. that you talked yeah. about, yeah. for this offense to grow, it's not all about Brock Berlin. It's about exactly. throwing a hitch to a receiver, yeah. making a guy miss, and going 70 or 80 yards. They've always had that ability, and then that opens up everything else. Miami takes over offensively from the 48. Tyrone Moss over 100 yards. Adds another 10 to his total there. A nice block by Tony Tell on the left guard and the center, Joel Rodriguez. And remember one thing about offensive football you, teams. You just can't say, let's turn it on. I mean, you've got to have one of those consistent games, game after game, like Oklahoma, Southern California. When they're playing good football, they really play football every week. Not like a yo-yo. And Miami is not a balanced offensive team to be number one in the nation if they want to be number one. Fifteenth carry tonight for Moss. He's right at 126 yards. They ran left side over there. Eric Winston and Tony Teller are both Texans. Look at Winston. He's a massive man. 6'7", 307. Was a tight end when he got to Miami as a freshman. Played in every game that freshman year. They kicked him down a tackle. And uh, he went to high school over at Midland Lee High School, of course. If you remember the day of the book Friday Night Lights, Midland Lee played Odessa Permian. That was the great high school rivalry in Texas, still is. He won all those games, and he's beaten Florida State all four times he's played against the Seminoles. So he is 7-0 in two of the great rivalries in football. Florida State and Midland Lee against Odessa Permian. Jill has more. 
Another reason Eric Winston was okay with moving to that position was he found out looking at the NFL, the life expectancy in that position plus the salary in that position was a lot more than where he was. So he said, I have no problem changing. Left tackles make more than tight ends. Jim Kleinsaucer from the Minnesota Vikings, who was just injured for the season, was the top paid tight end. It's half of what the top paid offensive tackle makes. And he is first round tackle material, according to the Miami coaches. <laughs> you know, You're you know, talk about the no hitter. Happens. Guy throws a no, oh, guy gets a hit. Wait a minute, I want to say that Brock Berlin actually sacked watches. himself. He sacked himself. All right, you don't believe me. Watch no. Brock Berlin. He will run. Watch him. Watch him. He'll run. Right. <laughs> he runs right into the. It, it, it wasn't as if Cade Lane just walks right I mean, by. He's getting I mean, owned right there by Winston. But Brock, uh, Brock ran right into him. I mean, that's a sack of the quarterback. I mean, uh, uh, that was beautiful, guys. That was just, you know, perfect timing. Yeah, set that story up. It's nice. Yeah, we haven't said his name all night. Yeah, Roscoe Parrish. Third and a dozen. Harris is in that slot. Berlin is sacked. Uh -huh. Wade Cole joined Brendan Bahulu for the fifth sack by the Cougars tonight. Miami only allowed three sacks in the first two games. But this second half, this has kind of been something we, we've seen quite a bit of is the pressure. The adjustment that Houston made at halftime is if we get them into third down, we're going to bring the house, take our chances because, hey, what do we have to lose? And they're winning those battles up front. Let's see if Brian Monroe can pin him inside the 10 again. Inside the 15, the fair catch made by Rocky Schwartz. Seven minutes left, Houston down 18. We will talk about those early season surprises when we come back. Our producer tonight, Bo Garrett, director Mike Schwab. Great to be with our ESPN Thursday night college football primetime crew here in Houston. And somebody named Bo Garrett should be producing a game in Texas, don't you think? Oh, yeah. <laughs> we dump him off the side of the road the rest of the year, but we take him in Texas, right? Kevin Cobb, the sophomore quarterback, he's a Texan. Stevensville born run the ball a lot here tonight Ryan Gilbert with the carry there the Yanks and the Sox you know when they went to this uh, unbalanced schedule in baseball it seems like the Yankees and Red Sox play all the time and that's great the hunt for October presented by Budweiser the final series between these teams gets going at Fenway at 7 Eastern 4 Pacific the Yankees won today. The Red Sox lost tonight to the Orioles after their back-to-back walk-off wins. So the Sox have to sweep the series if they want to win the division, but they're in good wild card shape still as Cobb throws that one away. Why don't you take the standings well, here, Slick? Let me, let me ask you something, because I know you're in a, you've become an American League guy, <laughs> which I don't appreciate, so I don't really follow the American League much. Uh -huh. I'm a National League guy, personally. But the Yankees and the Red Sox. Let's just assume yeah. they make a run and they're both going to be in the ALCS. And here we go again. Boston and they all hey, here. They... You look at the rotation with the way Lowe's improved in the second half with Pedro and Chile going up against the Yankees. Who do you like? Who do you like in a, in a series? You can tell he has a radio talk show, can't you? Oh, yeah. He's I mean, showing off I follow a little bit. Showing off now? No, I'm just no, asking no, you. I mean, Seriously, got, with the way Lowe's come. Lee, Lee is going to tell you why this week could be important for the Red Sox. Cobb is chased and brought down as he is sacked. The reason why is this, the most important. The way they have come back the last two times I've watched them in the ninth inning, they never give up. I really respect the way they play by never giving up. Even that little guy hit a home run last night to win it. To win the game. You know, in our, our sport, we have Texas and OU, and people ask, is it mental with Texas and OU? Red Sox, Yankees, is it is it as much mental as it is? Of course it is. It's the same thing we talked about the Michigan State game. It's the expectation that the wrong thing is going to happen no matter how good the success is. The positive vibe just is not there in general. But you just get a different sense of the Red Sox this year, don't you? Here's Hester on the run for the 45. Took year. two punt returns back last week. Brought down there at the 32-yard line. Every year we're feeling a different vibe, and every year the Yankees go to the World Series. You done baseball tonight? Yeah. yeah. Harold right. Reynolds? Send me Crocker in the booth, please. Take Crown Crocker. <laughs> no, that doesn't let him go. Be right back. Let him go. ESPN's College Football Primetime is presented by Cooper Tires Ultimate Bowl Tour. 
Go to a Cooper dealer near you or visit ultimatebowltour.com to enter. And in part by the next Ford F-150. 2004 Motor Trend Truck of the Year. We welcome you back to Houston, America's fourth largest city. It's Hurricane Ivan, which is turned back around to Tropical Storm Ivan, and is threatening this Galveston area here. Uh, it's 50 miles away. It's supposed to get heavy rain here tonight. Moss with the carry. He continues to be the workhorse here tonight. Well, the early season surprises. We saw one when Troy State, or Troy, excuse me, beat yeah. Missouri, number 17 in the country. What about early season surprises? Well, Fresno, obviously, Boise, and Utah, but the two teams, I didn't think Purdue and Virginia would be this strong on both sides of the ball. They have completely bomb both football teams that they play. Yeah, and we're going to see more about Purdue. They play Notre Dame and also see Virginia against better opponents. For me, Michigan. Michigan's been incredibly vulnerable, not only with the freshman quarterback, but even with their defense. Berlin in trouble, nearly sacked. Serpentine, serpentine on the run to the 13-yard line. As some escape by Brock Berlin to pick up 14 yards. Showing a little creativity. He's yeah. not going to make a habit of this, but at least he has it in his back pocket. He's been pressured this entire second half. I think he took matters into his own hands this time. And it make 14 yards out of all that running. Yeah, it was good running. Pretty remarkable. But the other one is Arizona State. I wanted yeah. Arizona State, what they did against Iowa, a team that underachieved last year and now playing some pretty good football. We'll see what they can do this weekend against Oregon State. Arizona State thrashed the Hawkeyes 44 7 late Saturday night. Moss up the middle, and he's at the four, just a yard shy. As Miami's offense tries to get in the end zone for the first time in the second half. Their lone third quarter score came on a fumble return. Don't expect that out of Miami. That's not the way the third or fourth ranked team in the nation should play offense. That's why all the first teamers still in there. Boss 18 carries, 143 yards. Trying to add to it as he spins into the end zone for a touchdown. It's two tonight for Tyrone and uh, four here in the last five days. Had two touchdowns against Louisiana Tech. Frank Gore has been a spectator this second half, but he's watched. His buddy Tyrone running in a few times here tonight. A career high for the sophomore out of Pompano Beach. And John Penny adds the 51st point of the night. 38 13. Tyrone Moss extends the Miami lead to 25. Reminder as soon as we're done, Stuart Scott and Susie Colbert of Sports Center talking about the long road back for Frank Gore. If you haven't seen that story that Tom Rinaldi is the reporter on, first aired on College Game Day on Saturday. There's an unbelievable look at what Gore has had to overcome. In addition, you saw the other stories there, on the latest updates on the punch for October, the baseball chase, and talk about if anybody can knock off Southern California. Tar Heel and a cane. Stu and Sue's have Sports Center as soon as we're done here. Oh. That is the third absolute all time stick and the second good tackle by a receiver tonight. Darnell Jenkins made that tackle. There have been great kickoff coverage oh. hits by Miami this evening. What you got to love is you know, the guys who cover the kickoffs are Ooh. starters. I mean, they all play. I tell you, if I was coaching against Miami, I'd put the guy that's been talking the worst about me, you know, a player. Back there. Back there. That's a good point. point. That's fair. That's a good that's point. I'd say, okay, sweetheart, right. see, what, really see what you think of me now. You feel a little frisky? Yeah. You're on, returning okay. kicks this yeah. week against Miami. Miami. Good luck. We'll see. Kevin Cobb. Pass is caught. Nice grab on the sideline by the reserve tight end. Mark Hopkins. Well, Anthony Reddick will be our Wrangler 
player of the game tonight. He blocked a punt in the first half, recovered for a touchdown, forced a fumble in the third quarter, returned for a touchdown. He made him happen. He's our Wrangler player of the game. He's a true freshman. True freshman out of Fort Lauderdale. Wearing number 26 with the visor. Holding up his end of the bargain there. Looking good. And Sean Taylor look. Taking it up to Washington with the Redskins. Todd threw uh, across his body on the run. Incomplete. Second down. If you're joining us late, here are the plays by Reddick. First drive, 55 seconds in. Probably. I'm sorry. An probably. unusual alignment there. And probably won't see that again from Houston this year, I would guess. No. And watch the hands by Reddick. Again, as a freshman taking the coaching, strips the ball. Barack Atkins picks it up and scores the second non offensive touchdown for the Canes. Wrangler number two. I'll do one in a second. Oh. Okay. You can go ahead now. <laughs> no, just get no. it. No, you're good. Whatever you need. The yeah, Bermuda, maybe the Wrangler Bermuda shorts should go to Tyrone Ross. The guy only had 148 yards, 7.8 per carry. The, and I'm not saying anything. Riddick did a nice job. He made two plays. The other guy busted his butt for a whole game running the ball, and he gets the prize. So, so you're, dis right. you're disagreeing with yes, the truck on the player of the yes. game, huh? I think Tyrone oh. Ross was the player of this boy. I think he carried him, banging in, banging in there, banging in there. That's my opinion. So can I give him a Bermudas of the week? You, you, you cut off jeans, maybe? Cut off jeans, yeah. Nicely tapered, though? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Third and 11. Fourth and 11. Therese McCray, a redshirt freshman out of Pompano Beach. That, that Broward-Dade County area, oh. two counties down there in South Florida. Very few people get out. You know, Jim Tressel comes to Ohio State, talks about putting a fence around Ohio. I mean, Miami's got like a two county area they put a fence around, and they just shut it down. That sure. McCray's a great story. You know, he was supposed to go to Iowa. Mm -hmm. On the last day of signing, some kid went to Florida State, and they brought him in instead of going to Iowa. He's, they say he's going to be a terrific football player. This is fourth down. Cobb will try to run for it. Can't do that. Not against these guys. Tavares Gooden, the linebacker, makes the tackle. Miami will take over with 2.15 left. And Kirk, we talk about all the players that Miami loses and how the names aren't as familiar, but they will become familiar because they're so good. This is astounding. Since 2000, they've had 20 first rounders. And look at what everybody else did. That's second. A big time. A six is very impressive. And some great schools. Miami's had 20. That's unbelievable. But look at the separation. Oh. I mean, you said all these other schools are great schools to even to have six, but 20 since uh, 2000, and there are more to come. By the way, that graphic we're gonna have, we're gonna keep adding to that graphic over the next two or three. Now years. That was first round picks, right? First yeah. round okay. picks. And Brock Berlin out, Derek Crudup the senior in at quarterback. He'll run a little boot, and run with it with a block from Kevin Everett the tight end, picks up a. First down. Let's go down to Jill Arrington, who eluded that play on the sideline. Jill. That's right. I have some pretty good protectors here. Look who I found. There's four alumni standing right next to me. That's what they do here at Miami. You know, the old players come back, and they really care about this, this whole program. They've been giving these guys talks on the sidelines, giving them pointers. They really want them to lead the legacy that they did. And, in fact, Coach Coker told me, he said that he walked through that weight room this summer. There were 11 first-rounders working out in the weight room. They continue to come back. But that, here at Russell, Maryland, Alonzo Highsmith, Todd Seavers, Andre Johnson, Darren Smith, Bubba McDowell, they're all in the house tonight supporting their canes. It is amazing as you travel around. Every time it's a Miami road game, there are canes represented on the sideline. Miami road game is one thing, but to see them at the Orange Bowl when they're out about... For the big game. Yeah, the big, they, they, they come out for the big game. What a show games. that is. It's, they're, they're about 100 deep on the sideline for each is. generation. But Dave is a, such a unique family, and it helps for future recruiting classes. But Lee, you said you made a comment about Miami's offense, and they're not playing it. I think we all agree, and people watching this game would agree, this is not the offense that you would expect to see from Miami. I guess what I would say at this point is I look at some of these non-conference games, almost like remember in March Madness, the first round basketball tournament, yeah. a team like Kentucky is a one seed, stumbles along in week in the first uh, round of the tournament, maybe the second round of the tournament. All of a sudden they get to the Sweet 16 and Elite Eight, they start to finally play their kind of basketball. To me, that's what non-conference games remind me of. I'm not saying Miami's no. 
take this for granted. I just think they're capable of playing much, much better, and I think they will. All right. Russell Maryland with his Super Bowl ring there for the Cowboys. I would say this. USC, Oklahoma, they play non-conference teams, and, and they kick the crap machine. out of them. They're a machine. They're the, they're the two best teams by far yep. in every aspect. Miami is not a top 10, top 5 team nationally offensively. They are right athlete-wise, and those guys make the covered kickoffs. But well, right now they're not. Oh, right excuse, now. Me. Excuse, me. excuse me. Okay. That's got a little business. Oh, okay. Okay. Right. Sorry. Huh? Sorry. Our Applebee's hometown hero tonight is Tony Tella. He got to come back to his hometown Houston and be part of, and he talked about it in this morning's Houston Chronicle, a fine article, how he got to come back as part of the dominant program over the last 20 years to his hometown and a chance to play college football, something he never dreamed of uh, being able to do, but always had hoped for. And got to live through it tonight. So Tony Tella is our Applebee hometown hero. I'm sorry I didn't know that. Oh, that's okay. Right. Well, good. Good job. We keep going. <laughs> Should be the final play of the night. Looks like there will be no more scoring. And it'll be a 25 point Miami win. <clears throat> Gentlemen, you and Jill travel safe to Wisconsin for Wisconsin Penn State College Game Day. Saturday, built by the Home Depot, 1030 a.m. Eastern. Next Thursday night, Navy and Air Force in oh. Colorado Springs. What a great game that'll be tonight. Miami improves its record to 3 and 0. Offense wasn't super impressive, but they did just enough on a short week to handle Houston 38-13. Houston's record now falls to 2 and 2. For Lee Corso, Kirk Herb Street, Jill Arrington, Mike Tirico, thank you for watching this presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For more on college football, log on to espn.com. Stuart Scott, Susie Culver, Sports Center next. Good night from Houston, and off we go. Sports Center.